Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend, the DN What If, with another fanfiction. This is the movie of, What If Deku Had All of the Quirks? All credits for this video go to their respective authors, so please support the real author. Check out the link in the description for more details. Please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Izuku Midoriya was a young boy. He was smart and kind one day wanting to be like his hero, All Might. Though by the time he was six, he showed no visible signs of a quirk. This was until one day. Izuku and his friend Katsuki Bakugo were playing in a park when something strange happened. The two were playing a game of heroes and villains, with Katsuki being the villain and Izuku being the hero. Katsuki was running quickly and Izuku was catching up to him. Suddenly, as they approached the swing sets that lined the playground, Izuku noticed that his hands were shaking slightly. A strange feeling bubbled up inside the child. He knew it wasn't normal, but he didn't know why or how to stop this new occurrence. He glanced over at Katsuki, who was still running. I'm going to get you, villain, Izuku yelled, running towards Katsuki. However, when Izuku actually caught Katsuki, he noticed a weird smell coming from his hands, and the fact that they were more sweatier than usual was also pretty weird. Damn it, Katsuki playfully yelled. Not noticing the strange occurrence, Izuku shook Katsuki's hand as a display of good sportsmanship, but both of them noticed something weird. Hey, your hands are sweatier than usual, Izuku. Katsuki pointed out. Izuku looked at his hands. Do you think my quirk is finally manifesting? Izuku excitedly asked. I mean, it could be, Katsuki shrugged, soon noticing that his hands weren't as sweaty as they usually were. Your quirk might be similar to mine. As he was saying this, Katsuki tried to show off his own quirk. But the explosion he made this time wasn't as big or as powerful as usual. How what the heck happened to my quirk? Katsuki shouted in frustration. Izuku reached over to Katsuki, accidentally doing something that probably couldn't be undone. Izuku accidentally blasted an explosion in Katsuki's face, in a similar fashion to how Katsuki would use his own quirk to fend off against anyone who would want to mess with him, only this blast was 36 times more powerful than what Katsuki could do. And this blast injured Katsuki quite a bit. Without a second thought, Izuku went to get both Inko Izuku's mother and Mitsuki Katsuki's mother, who were nearby but not paying too much attention on the boys. Before either of them could react to Izuku's urgency, Izuku started crying. Mom, I hurt Kaken, he's hurt really bad, Izuku cried, pointing at Katsuki who was lying there on the ground. Soon, Mitsuki had called an ambulance, worried for her son. I'm sorry Kaken, Izuku quietly told Katsuki, putting his own hand on his friend's head. When Izuku got home that night, he immediately went straight to bed refusing dinner, he wanted nothing more than to forget about today's events. Unfortunately, sleep wouldn't come easily that night. A few days later, however, Izuku decided to go to the hospital to see how Katsuki was. Katsuki seemed okay at first glance. His skin wasn't burned, so Izuku assumed that the blast didn't injure too much. How are you feeling? Izuku asked, sitting down next to Katsuki. Like shit. Katsuki replied bluntly. Oh well, I'm glad you're okay. Izuku said, smiling. Yeah, whatever. Katsuki rolled his eyes. So are you just here to visit, or? My mother thought it would be good to get my quirk checked out, so while I was waiting for the doctor, I thought I should come visit to see if you're okay. Izuku replied. Well, thanks. Katsuki replied. A few minutes after the short visit, Izuku and his mother were called into the doctor's office. So what exactly happened when your quirk manifested? The doctor asked Izuku. I was, I'm playing heroes and villains with my friend, and I felt a weird feeling inside of me, and I touched my friend and he tried to show off his quirk, but he couldn't get it to, um, work. So I tried to reach out to him, and then I accidentally blasted him in the face with his own, um, quirk. Izuku nervously explained. The doctor ran a few tests like asking what happened the day after that, and if he still had the quirk. After all of the tests were complete, the doctor had come up with a theory. It seems that your son here has an emitter-type quirk that allows him to steal the power of other people's quirks while giving the original user a weaker version of their own quirk. The doctor explained. What does this quirk mean for him? Will he have any trouble controlling it in the future? Inko questioned. Not at all. It shouldn't cause any issues. But in case he does have any issues in the future, I just want to run one more test on your son. 
The doctor replied, taking Izuku to a room with three doctors. Izuku looked quite nervous, hearing about what his own quirk could have been. Sure, it was kind of powerful, but with the damage he had caused to his own friend Katsuki, he was afraid that he'd be seen as a villain by the public and would never become a pro hero like he had always wanted to. All right, Midoriya, I want to see what the limits of your quirk are, so try to take each of these doctors' quirks. The doctor instructed. Izuku nodded and walked up to the first doctor. I have an emitter quirk called Evaluate, which allows me to analyze other people's quirks. The doctor explained. It isn't very useful to me, so you can take it. Izuku nodded, touched the doctor on the arm. Before either of them knew it, Izuku had successfully taken the first doctor's quirk, leaving the doctor with a weaker version of Evaluate. I think I have your quirk now, Izuku smiled. Soon, Izuku looked at the second doctor. It appears you have a transformation quirk called Ignite, which allows you to ignite your body in flames. Izuku evaluated, though it looks like you haven't reached your full quirk potential, though I guess it makes sense because your body heat is depleted quite a bit whenever you use your quirk. That's actually correct. I have to always wear a coat when I use my quirk at home, but hey, at least you'll one day probably find a use for it. The second doctor smiled. Izuku prepared to take the quirk of the second doctor before asking the doctor something. Will I burn myself whenever I use your quirk? Izuku asked. No, whenever I've used my quirk in the past, I've noticed that wherever I ignite my body, it becomes fireproof. The doctor replied, smiling. Now come on, kid. Don't be shy. Izuku nodded, touching the second doctor and taking his quirk. Hey, that wasn't as bad as I thou, Izuku said, before uncontrollably igniting himself in random areas of himself, before stopping after a few seconds. It looks like after you take someone's quirk, you involuntarily use the quirk, one of the doctors pointed out. I guess so, Izuku nodded, walking to the third doctor. I have a mutant quirk I call tentacles, which gives me tentacles on my back. The third doctor explained. Now try to take my quirk and see what taking a mutant quirk does to you. Izuku nodded and touched the third doctor. After taking the quirk, the third doctor didn't have his quirk weakened and Izuku had a similar version of the quirk. And a few seconds later, Izuku sprouted several tentacles on his back. Whoa, these are so cool, Izuku exclaimed. Good, now see if you can deactivate tentacles. The doctor instructed. Izuku nodded and deactivated tentacles, though it was harder to do. I guess mutants are harder for you to use. One of the doctors guessed. After a few more tests, the doctor had brought Izuku back into the room he was in before. So it looks like my prediction was a little incorrect. Your son's quirk allows him to take a portion of someone else's quirk, leaving the target with a weaker version of their quirk, and giving your son a stronger version of the quirk based on a number of factors. The doctor explained. For emitter-type quirks, it's Izuku's age times the target's age. For transformation quirks, it's Izuku's age times the target's age, then divided by half of Izuku's age. But for mutant quirks, the stolen quirk's power stays the same as when it was originally used. Inko looked at her son, smiling. Izuku, what would you like to name your quirk, sweetie? Inko asked Izuku. Izuku thought for a while. He soon realized that he was basically the one with all of the quirks. He then realized that if he wanted to, he could become a dangerous villain, which he didn't want to be. He wanted to be a pro hero, gosh darn it. How about I name my quirk one with all, Izuku announced. One with all it is. The doctor replied, I wish you luck into the world, Izuku. But what about Katsuki Bakugo? Will he be okay? Izuku asked the doctor. I can promise that Katsuki will be okay. The doctor clarified, in fact, he's being released tomorrow. Relief flooded through Izuku. Thank you so much, Dr. Izuku said, bowing slightly. The doctor simply smiled and waved goodbye as Izuku exited the room. Once they both left the hospital, both Izuku's and Inko's faces were filled with relief. They both sighed heavily, smiling. The rest of the afternoon passed quickly. After talking with Katsuki's parents, both Izuku and Inko visited Katsuki again. When the time came for Katsuki's discharge from the hospital, he took Izuku's accidental quirk usage. Mitsuki, however, didn't trust Izuku that much. Why aren't you scared of him? Mitsuki asked. Mitsuki, calm down. It was an accident. Inko sighed. He hurt Katsuki, and he still hasn't even apologized yet. 
I don't know what to think anymore, Mitsuki mumbled. You don't need to worry, everything is okay now, Inko assured. You should at least keep an eye on that boy. Mitsuki demanded, you don't know what he could do next. It happened because his quirk manifested. Inko tried to explain. I still can't believe it. Mitsuki muttered under her breath. We all make mistakes when we're young, Mitsuki. Inko smiled softly. Just accept it and move on. All right, I trust you. Mitsuki sighed. Meanwhile, Izuku and Katsuki were talking as well in secret, though their mothers knew that they were there, just not what they were doing. So what you're saying is that you accidentally stole the power of my quirk, involuntarily used it, accidentally injured me, and then gave it back to me? Katsuki asked. Yeah, that's what happened. Izuku confirmed. I'm sorry for doing all of that. I forgive you, just don't let it happen again. Katsuki replied. And with both of our quirks combined, we'll be the greatest heroes ever. I hope so, Kaken Izuku happily grinned. It had been eight years since Izuku was diagnosed with having the quirk he named one with all. His schoolwork had also improved drastically thanks to his new training methods, and his relationship with Katsuki has gone a whole lot better, especially since the two both had strong quirks. You're all third years now. It's time for you to start seriously considering your futures. Katsuki and Izuku's homeroom teacher told the class as he looked at them from the podium. While normally I would pass out these career aptitude tests, why bother? I know you all want to be heroes. The entire class, barring two, cheered as they showed off their quirks. Yes, yes, you all have very nice quirks, but using them at school is against the rules, so restrain yourselves. Hey, sensei, don't lump me in with most of these extras, Katsuki spoke up. Most of this lot would be lucky to end up as sidekicks to a busted D-lister. I'm the real deal, predictably, his fellow classmates had something to say about that as they all tossed insults his way. Bring it on, I'll take you all on. Hmm, you do have impressive test results. The teacher commented, maybe you will get into Yua. Cue the shocked exclamations of the rest of the class that Katsuki was trying to get into the number one hero school. That's why Yua is perfect for me, Katsuki replied as he stood up from his seat. I aced all the mock tests. I'm the only one at this school that stands a chance of getting in. I'll be more popular than All Might himself and become the richest hero of all time. People all across the world will know my name. And it all starts with Yua. Oh yes, Midoriya, you applied for Yua as well, right? The teacher asked, looking over his paperwork. Yes, sensei, Izuku replied, and all of the other students whispered among themselves. I hoped you would, quirkologist, Katsuki exclaimed soon after Izuku replied to the teacher's question. Together, we'll be the best, you and me, quirkologist. Izuku then covered his ears. Not so loud, Kaken Izuku told Katsuki. Oh, right. Sorry, I forgot about your sensitivities. Katsuki apologized, speaking in a normal volume. Izuku uncovered his ears. It's fine, Kaken, but thank you. The rest of the day had gone the same as usual, and nothing interesting happened. As the day ended, both Izuku and Katsuki's hype for the entrance exam for UA were increasing. After Izuku had cleared up his things, he and Katsuki had started walking home. How do you think we'll do on the exams? Izuku asked Katsuki. We'll be fine. We just need to become more powerful. Katsuki replied, a grin showing up on his face. Speaking of power, have you gotten attacked by any villains lately? Not really, Izuku replied. Though I find it funny that whenever I do get attacked by a villain, I always gain a quirk after the attack. Speaking of that, how many quirks do you have now? I bet it's like 30 at this point, right? Katsuki asked Izuku. No, but you're pretty close, Izuku replied. I have 24 stockpiled quirks. The first three were from the doctors who wanted to see what it could do. Then I got 14 from when villains attacked me, and I got six of them from vigilantes. My most recent one was from my mother as a present. That many, huh, quirkologist? Katsuki was surprised at Izuku's reply. Do you know how to use them all? Oh, uh, well, mostly. I'm not too sure about quirk number six, gunpoint. It's kind of hard to tell when it is activated, but it does give me better aim, so at least that's not too much of a handicap. I also don't know much about quirk number 17, gummy body, though I know that it's a mutant-type quirk and it gives me a rubbery body, but mutant types are harder for me to use, so it makes sense. 
I just hope I'll be able to make a use out of it and make the vigilante that gave it to me proud. Izuku infodumped. Yeah, yeah, Katsuki rolled his eyes. Anyways, I bet your mom knows about all those quirks of yours, doesn't she? Well, she may know some, she doesn't know all of them, but she knows enough of my quirks. Izuku responded. As the duo's conversation continued, neither of them noticed a sludgy villain standing right behind them. Before either of them had any time to react, the villain had jumped onto Katsuki, slowly consuming him. Ah, ah, Izuku, help me, Katsuki exclaimed as Izuku just stood there in fear. What quirk do I use? Ice blade? Ignite? Tentacles? Izuku pondered. I don't care what you do, just do it, Katsuki yelled. Don't worry. I'm just hijacking your body. Calm down. It'll only hurt for about 45 seconds then it'll be all over. The sludge villain chuckled continuing to suffocate Katsuki. Without thinking, Izuku used a combination of the three quirks he was just thinking about, forming a blade of ice on his right arm, and two flaming tentacles coming out of his back, attacking the sludge villain trying not to hit Katsuki. Katsuki meanwhile just couldn't feel anything due to the slime villain choking him. However, as Izuku continued fighting, he eventually managed to free Katsuki from the villain and immediately ran towards him and healed him from his injuries using his regeneration quirk. After that, Izuku deactivated his quirks. They were both breathing heavily as they stood up, Izuku taking hold of Katsuki. Thank you, Izuku, Katsuki told him. Izuku just shrugged, blushing slightly. I didn't really do much. I didn't mean physically. You stopped him from killing me. Katsuki replied. After the sludge villain was about to retreat, a familiar face had show up. I am here. The number one pro hero, All Might announced collecting the remains of the sludge villain and putting it in a plastic bottle. All Might, both Izuku and Katsuki exclaimed in awe. Yes, it is me, All Might announced. And I couldn't help but notice that you young boys got caught up in some trouble with this villain here. That's true. But I tried to use my quirk to attack him. Izuku explained, I see usually it would be illegal to use your quirk out in public like that, but since you used it for self-defense you get an exception. All Might said, Say are you two planning on going into the hero course? Ah uh, yeah, kinda, Izuku replied. We're planning on applying to UA, Katsuki explained. Well I see, you two will become fine heroes one day. All Might nodded. Wait. Before you go, could you autograph my notebook, Izuku requested, taking out his notebook on pro heroes. Already done it, All Might exclaimed as Izuku looked in his notebook, amazed at the autograph from All Might in there. Wow, you really are all mighty, Izuku exclaimed in awe. Now I must be on my way, All Might announced, jumping off. Izuku and Katsuki were both very speechless. Quirkologist? Yes, Kaken. Did what I think just happened happen? Well, what do you think happened? Did we just witness the number one pro hero being a pro hero? Yes, Kagan, that did just happen. The two then realized what had happened. We just got complimented by all might, Katsuki and Izuku both cheered. I'll never forget this day, Katsuki exclaimed. This notebook will become a family heirloom, Izuku fanboyed, about to faint from all of the excitement. The two boys then ran home in excitement. For the next few months, the two trained with their quirks to get ready for the entrance exam for UA. Katsuki mostly trained in making his explosions more powerful, but Izuku trained with his quirks in a number of ways. Both of the boys trained by cleaning up the beach with their quirks. They knew that they wouldn't get the beach fully cleaned up, but they tried. Izuku practiced with using quirk combinations, like using web shoot and vine whips allowed Izuku to make piles of trash he was collecting bigger. Or using tentacles and objectify, Izuku managed to turn big piles of trench into smaller ones. Though as a dedication to his mother, Izuku mostly practiced with attraction of small objects, aka his mother's quirk, furthering the pulling distance and making the pull stronger. Katsuki mostly worked through his quirk. Using explosion to break through walls helped increase his strength, while doing so which made him more useful than his explosion ability. He also learned how to make his attack stronger without destroying the structure of the building. He also learned to control it as much as possible and avoid breaking any windows in the house. His main focus was mainly on getting stronger in regards to endurance and speed. So far he was having lots of success with the training.
and thanks to this training he's been improving even more each passing month as well as his combat skills. It wasn't that long ago that Izuku was still working on figuring out how to control all of his quirks, but now with his new knowledge he's been trying to figure things out faster. With his new knowledge, he's also been working on mastering the art of using his quirk on multiple people without affecting himself. Though in order to achieve this goal, he still needs to practice controlling his quirk on a larger scale, meaning that, with his growing understanding on controlling his quirks, he has been able to control multiple people at once without worrying about himself or others. And with this, he's been able to successfully fight against his own limits and surpass them, achieving a level of control where he can actually defeat a stronger opponent without causing harm to himself. Overall, Izuku's been working steadily, and he hasn't lost his drive and perseverance. As such, Katsuki has become the main support of Izuku. While Izuku is currently at the stage of developing his quirk, Katsuki is working hard to understand his quirk and master it, so that Izuku can use it without fearing for his own life. When it comes to physical fitness, Katsuki has gone a step further in training his quirk. He decided that he wanted to learn how to improve his stamina and keep up the best record he could so he would never have to rely on anyone else ever again. When it comes to martial arts, Katsuki has gone ahead and gotten himself a set of boxing gloves because he doesn't want to risk damaging his hands again if he gets hurt. When it comes to academics, Katsuki has gone ahead and studied a lot of subjects in hopes of gaining a greater knowledge of the subject, including history, geography, literature, science, economics, and the likes. Because he wants to get into UA, he doesn't want to fail any classes. At least that's what Katsuki thinks. He may not be sure of many things sometimes, but he does know that Izuku definitely cares for his academics, especially English. He knows that Izuku hates doing schoolwork in general, but he has to do it for Izuku. Even though he might seem reluctant about school, he knows deep inside that it's part of Izuku's dream to become a hero, and he'd do anything for Izuku. While training some more, Izuku learned of possible quirk combinations that he could use. Though he learned that the more same type quirks he used in a combination, the harder for Izuku to control the quirk combinations. As Katsuki has been busy preparing for the entrance exams, he hasn't been keeping up with Izuku as often, which leads to him not knowing of his friend's progress. However, despite being busy with studying for these exams, Katsuki is still extremely proud of Izuku. After a few more months, the entrance exam was coming up, and the beach was looking very clean. As a result, Katsuki and Izuku decided to train and improve themselves together, practicing various different techniques and fighting styles, and even talking about how they wish they can work as heroes together. In fact, Katsuki has already planned what he will teach Izuku. He wants to tell him about the basics, and then introduce him to more advanced techniques, and Izuku has promised that Katsuki can train with him after they graduate, helping each other grow their skills. Of course, if there was something that the two agreed upon, it would be the training. Of course, as the two teenagers trained, Katsuki noticed that Izuku was a little bit nervous about the upcoming exam. He was also starting to worry about Izuku. He seemed distracted during their training sessions. Are you feeling okay, quirkologist? Something on your mind, Katsuki asked, concerned for his friend. Huh, no, nothing's wrong. Izuku assured, though he still seemed nervous. Really? Cause you don't look too good. Katsuki commented, noticing his pale complexion. Maybe I'm just a bit tired from training so much. Izuku responded. If you say so. Katsuki shrugged. But if something's bothering you. I know, Kaken. Izuku sighed, rubbing his forehead. A few weeks later, it was finally the day of the U, a entrance exam. Izuku and Katsuki were pumped. That day, they did a brief training session before heading to UA. I am so excited for today. Izuku grinned, swaying back and forth a bit. Oh man, I've been training so much, it'd be a real waste not to pass. Yeah, me too. Katsuki said with a smile. I'm sure you'll get top score. Yeah, Izuku smiled back. Let's head over now. We should arrive early for the entrance exam. Izuku exclaimed. The two headed over to UA, hoping to arrive a tad bit earlier than most students. I am ready for thigh, Izuku exclaimed before tripping on the ground. It wasn't long until Izuku was saved by a girl using her quirk on him. Oh, sorry, I should have asked before using my quirk on you. The girl apologized. It's okay, it's bad luck to fall on an important day like this. Izuku pointed out. True, I'm sorry. 
She replied, apologizing again. Just then the bell rang. Hey, quirkologist, are you coming? Katsuki yelled out to Izuku. Oh yeah, coming, Izuku replied before turning to the girl. I'll see you around. Good luck on the exams. Katsuki and Izuku both excitedly ran into the U, a building. We are so pumped for this, Izuku and Katsuki exclaimed. After Katsuki and Izuku went inside, they made their way to the written exam. It wasn't too difficult. There were questions about quirks, heroes, politics, etc. Basically, it was just about explaining stuff that needed to be explained and asking the examinee to write down an explanation if needed. And of course, if someone didn't answer a question properly, the examination was over immediately. Either way, the written exam was a piece of cake. But the more important exam was next the practical exam. What's up, you are candidates? Thanks for tuning in to me, your school DJ. Come on. And let me hear ya, pro hero, present Mike announced as everyone cheered. Now let's get straight to the main show. Let's talk about how Thai's practical exam is gonna go down, okay? Yeah, everyone cheered, Izuku covering his ears because of the noise. He knew that present Mike was quite loud and energetic, but he didn't realize just how loud and energetic he was. Oh great, Quirkologist, you okay? Katsuki asked Izuku. Why, yeah, just a bit noisy, Izuku replied. Back when Izuku was eight, he had a pair of noise-canceling headphones with him any time it was too loud for him. He used them up until he was 11, which was when he started to get mocked for wearing them, so he stopped wearing them. At 11 years old, it wasn't too late for him to start wearing them again though. Even so, he felt that he wouldn't get bullied without them. Like your application said, today you rockin' boys and girls will be out there conducting 10-minute mock battles in super hip urban settings. Gird your loins, my friends. After I drop the mic here, you'll head to your specified battle center, sound good, present Mike explained. Well, damn it. They're splitting us up so we can't work with any of our friends. Katsuki pointed out, whispering to Izuku. Yeah, you're right. Our examinee numbers are one after the other, but we're assigned to different battle centers. Izuku whispered, looks like we'll have to work hard by ourselves. Well, you can't always rely on you allies to get the job done. Katsuki gave some advice to Izuku. I'll remember that, Kaken. Izuku nodded. Good luck with the exam. As everyone parted ways, surprised at the large mock city that Yua called a training site. The fact that Yua had multiple sites like this one was amazing. Start, present Mike called out loudly from where he stood on a platform at the top of a tower, his voice reaching out across the large testing grounds and to all the various groups of applicants. Everybody in Izuku's testing group froze up for a moment at the sudden start. What are you waiting for? There are no countdowns in real life. Run! Go, go, go! With that Izuku and the rest of the examinees dashed forward into the large mock cityscape. Izuku ran slightly off course from the main group of students and found his first target quickly, a one-pointer according to the paper they'd gone over. Target acquired eliminate. The machine intoned and Izuku couldn't help but grin as it moved towards him. Izuku prepared himself for his attack. Gunpoint plus jelly surprise plus heart bomb plus vine whips. Izuku formed two thorny vine whips on his arms that were pulsing with Izuku's heavy heartbeat on his back. Izuku then used gunpoint to perfectly aim at the one-pointer's feet and then shot jelly surprise at it, trapping it in place. Izuku then used heart bomb on his feet and jumped up to the face of the one-pointer and vine whipped it in the face using his heart bomb enhanced vine whips, destroying it. Izuku had done this some more times, finding some two-pointers and taking them out by using a combination of attraction of small objects, objectify, tentacles, and ignite. Izuku formed several tentacles on his back, using a traction of small objects through the tentacles, taking out chunks of the two pointers, and then using Objectify to turn them into big metal spheres and use Ignite through the tentacles to set the spheres on fire, eventually taking the two pointers out. Izuku realized that this technique was quite efficient and effective, so he kept the combination turned on. Meanwhile, the teachers watching the exam play out were talking about Izuku. What's that guy's quirk? A teacher wondered, pointing to Izuku. I initially thought that Kid had some sort of trapping quirk, but clearly I must be mistaken. Another teacher replied. Why, you don't think he's related to him, do you? Another teacher wondered with the expression of fear on his face. Calm down, Toshinori. You don't know for sure that he's his son. A teacher in a sleeping bag said. 
though it does look like the kid has some sort of copying quirk. What's his name anyways? A female teacher asked. According to the files of all the students in the exam, his name is Izuku Midoriya. The principal answered, sipping on some tea. Back with Izuku, he had destroyed several robots, getting around 35 points. Though he still needed more points, so he looked around for more robots to destroy, only to find that there weren't many left. Time's running out, there's gotta be some more, Izuku thought to himself, his train of thought being halted by the sounds of people running and screaming. Izuku turned around to see that there was a zero-point robot chasing everyone. The robot smashes a few buildings and traps the girl that saved Izuku before the exam started underneath the debris. As the robot moves closer, it threatens to crush the girl. Wait, I recognize that girl, Izuku remembered, running towards the girl. Izuku briefly turned off his quirk combination and then switched to a combination of his most powerful quirks. Gummy body plus jelly surprise plus heart bomb plus ignite plus hold up plus ice blade. Izuku swung using his rubber body to the robot and used a combination of jelly surprise and ignite to trap it and set a robot on fire. Izuku then used gummy body to swing up to the robot's face and then used a combination of ice blade and heart bomb, slashing the zero-point robot in the face. Izuku then used his hold-up quirk and stopped the zero-point robot from doing anything else, throwing the robot away. Then deactivating his quirk combination out of exhaustion, falling. Right before getting close to the ground, Izuku is slapped in the face by the girl that saved him before the exam started. Thank you, Izuku said with a sigh. Nice of you to save my life. You wouldn't been fine if I hadn't helped you, the girl exclaimed happily. Just then, Izuku fainted because of exhaustion. After Izuku had fainted, he got taken by the nurse and she fixed everything he was hit with and then placed him in recovery girl's office to rest. Izuku had stayed unconscious while recovery girl took care of him. When he awoke, he was sat on the bed in recovery girl's office. The girl that helped Izuku before the exam was sitting at the side, talking to her friend and laughing at something the latter said. But when she noticed that Izuku woke up, she smiled at him and waved, standing up. Welcome back, Midoriya, recovery girl said, walking into the room with a medical kit. How do you feel, dear? Uh, fine, I guess, Izuku mumbled. I've bandaged your hands. Don't worry, you'll be able to use them soon enough, she told him. But we should probably check your forehead, make sure the bone in your skull isn't broken and all that jazz. I don't think it's broken. Izuku mumbled. Maybe a little bruised or sore, though. That's what I figured. Anyway, since you woke up just fine now, I'll let you go. I hope you don't have any lasting injuries, recovery girl explained. Um, thanks, Izuku asked. Izuku then walked out of UA with Katsuki waiting for him outside. What happened to you, quirkologist? I've been waiting out here for ages, Katsuki asked Izuku. I used too many quirks at once, and then I fainted, Izuku explained. Katsuki smirked. And here I thought you would want to stay longer in a combat training environment. He teased. I did stay longer than expected, but I'm pretty tired after all of that. Izuku yawned. I think I'll just head home and catch up on my sleep. Whatever, Katsuki said dismissively. Let's just go home already. Izuku nodded and followed his childhood friend home. On the way home, Izuku went straight into his room and laid down on his bed, closing his eyes and drifting off to sleep. After a nerve-wracking few weeks of waiting for the results of the exams to be announced, the results came out the very next day. Izuku and Katsuki both agreed to open their letters at Katsuki's house. Both boys were excited, knowing that they would get answers to some questions regarding their future hero careers. Katsuki opened his letter first, it contained a hologram projector with a pre-recorded message on it. Katsuki Bakugo, you passed the written test, scoring a 95% overall. Principal Nezu announced. As for the practical exam, you scored a total of 100 points. Congratulations, you have been accepted into UA. Oh hell yeah, Katsuki exclaimed in joy. Izuku opened his letter next. Izuku Midoriya, you've managed to pass the written test, scoring 98%. Principal Nezu announced. That's 3% over me, Katsuki interrupted. As for the practical exam, you scored 35 combat points. Principal Nezu announced. 
As for the rest of your points, due to your heroic rescue of Ochako Yuraraka, you've also scored 75 rescue points. Overall, you've scored 110 points. That's the highest out of all of the attendees. We'll be glad to have you here, Midoriya. Both Izuku and Katsuki were grinning as they put down their letters and high-fived each other. It didn't take long for them to start crying happy tears and hugging each other tightly. After they calmed down they sat opposite each other in their living room on the floor facing each other. I can't believe it, Izuku screamed with joy. It's true, Katsuki shouted as he began jumping up and down. This means we'll be going to you, a together now, and we're gonna become heroes together. Katsuki's words made Izuku burst out into hysterical laughter, making them both laugh hysterically on the floor, crying and hugging one another as hard as they could. Once they had calmed down, they stood up and embraced each other again, smiling brightly. We'll both become pro heroes someday, quirkologist, Katsuki shouted. Yeah, Izuku yelled. Soon, both Inko and Mitsuki hugged their respective sons, telling them how proud they are of the two. They congratulated the two, saying how proud they were of both boys, which caused Izuku to blush a bright shade of red, causing Katsuki to laugh at how embarrassing Izuku suddenly was. Once everyone finally calmed down, they decided to leave the celebration and return home. When the party ended, everyone went home. Inko, Mitsuki, and Masaru went home and Izuku headed to his room. Katsuki left after dropping Izuku off at his house, leaving Izuku alone, feeling happy about what the outcome of the exams were. He had been accepted into you, a high school where he will work with the person that saved him. Who knew he would meet someone like Katsuki who wanted to be just as heroic as him? As he fell asleep, he dreams about his future hero career as well as his dream of being an actual hero. There is no doubt about it, this was going to be great. He couldn't wait for his lifelong dreams to come true. Izuku found it hard to sleep that night as he couldn't stop thinking about what the future held for him. Inko had fallen asleep a little early, but not before giving her son a kiss on his forehead and whispering sweet nothings in his ear before falling asleep. Everything was going to plan. I am so pumped for this. Izuku thought to himself while sleeping. This was it. Finally the day that UA's school year started. All of the best heroes went to UA Endeavor, best genus, even All Might went to UA, and now it was time for Katsuki and Izuku to head to UA. Have you got everything, Izuku? Inko asked Izuku. Yes, I think I'm just about ready to go, Izuku answered. Are you sure? You didn't just pack action figures, right? Inko asked. I have everything. Now I gotta go. I don't want to be late. Izuku replied about to walk out the door with everything. Izuku, Inko called out to her son. What? Izuku groaned. I'm really proud of you, son. Inko told her son. Thank you, Izuku smiled. And with that, Izuku walked out the door, ready for UA. Downstairs, Katsuki was waiting for Izuku. Come on, quirkologist. I don't want to be late, Katsuki shouted. I don't want to be late either, Izuku responded. The two boys started walking to UA, both looking forward to the start of their new life with one another. About 20 minutes later, they arrived at UA's gates. They both looked at each other, both still nervous about entering UA's school and being away from their families, but neither boy showed it. Instead of showing how nervous they both felt, they both just smiled at each other and entered the school together. Wanawana Izuku whispered to himself, feeling a bit overwhelmed at being in UA's school. If we need to, we can ask someone where we need to go. Katsuki pointed out. Oh, okay, Izuku nodded nervously. Hey, it's okay. Katsuki reassured Izuku, you'll be amazing at this. I hope so, Izuku muttered softly. You are great at anything, don't underestimate yourself. Katsuki tried to encourage Izuku. Sorry, Kaken, Izuku apologized. Don't apologize, just focus on doing your best. Katsuki insisted. Thanks, Kaken, Izuku said, nodding to him. Good, Katsuki replied. Come on, let's get into our classroom. Once Katsuki and Izuku got to the, the classroom of class one, A. Izuku heard a familiar voice as Katsuki walked inside. Hey, I recognize that messy green hair, a female voice shouted, falling boy. Oh my gosh, it's that nice girl who talked to me, Izuku thought to himself. She looks good in that uniform. That punch you did was amazing, the girl complimented Izuku. So, uh, I should probably be thanking you saving me during the entrance exam. 
Oh, no need to thank me. It's what a pro hero would do. Izuku replied, I'm Izuku Midoriya, by the way. I'm Ochako Uraraka. Ochako introduced herself. What do you think we're doing today besides orientation? I wonder what our teachers are like. I can't wait to meet everybody. If you're just here to make friends, then you can pack up your stuff now. Another voice had spoken up, startling Izuku and Ochako. Welcome to U.S. Hero Course. The voice was coming from 1A's homeroom teacher, Shota Aizawa. He is a slender and tall, pale-skinned man with messy, shoulder-length black hair that partially hangs in front of his face and half-open black eyes. He sports a baggy black outfit that consists of a long-sleeved shirt and matching pants that tuck into his boots. He also wears a utility belt and his signature wrap scarf at all times. After the class had stopped muttering to themselves, Aizawa spoke up again. It took eight seconds before you all shut up. That's not gonna work. Time is precious. Aizawa scolded. Rational students would understand that. Who is this guy? He must be some sort of pro hero. Izuku thought to himself. But if he's here then... By the way, I'm your homeroom teacher, Shota Aizawa. Aizawa introduced himself. Though if you were wondering why I was late, then that's none of your business. Fla Ashbadadek. Aizawa was looking through his students' profiles to see if there was any extra information he should know about them. As he was finishing up, he got to Izuku's file. It's the student that got the most points overall in the entrance exam, Aizawa thought to himself. This will be fun to read. Name, Izuku Midoriya. Age, 15. Gender, male. Class, 1A. Teachers. Class 1 A Teachers. Shota Aizawa Homeroom Teacher. Tashinori Yagi Foundational Hero Studies Teacher. Ectoplasm Mathematics Teacher. Hizashi Yamada English Teacher. Ken Ishiyama Modern Literature Teacher. Medical History. Allergies None. Known Disorders. Autism Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. Additional Note. When Midoriya was a young age, he was constantly attacked by villains. So anything reminding him of those events will trigger his PTSD. Symptoms include being frozen with fear, curling up into a ball, blanking out, and unintentional quirk usage. Please be aware that because of his trauma, handling villains is a hard subject for Midoriya, so feel free to send him out of the room if things are getting out of hand. How interesting. Azawa mumbled to himself, not only does he have PTSD, he has autism as well. Then something clicked inside of Aizawa. If he gets involved with his classmates, he may experience some emotional stress as well. Maybe I should talk to him. Aizawa thought to himself. I'll have to do that later, I've only got two more files to read, and then I have to get to teaching my class. End of flashback. Aizawa then passed out PE clothes to the entire class. Put these on and meet me outside. Aizawa instructed, you have five minutes. Outside, the class waited for their teacher's instructions. U.S. course doesn't follow the normal academic path. Aizawa explained, to help get to know your own quirks better, there's going to be a quirk assessment test. But orientation, we're going to miss it, Achako yelled. If you really want to make the big leagues, you can't waste time on pointless ceremonies. Aizawa informed, here at UA, we're not tethered to traditions. That means that I get to run my class however I see fit. All of the class gasped. You've been taking standardized tests most of your lives, but you never got to use your quirks in physical exams before. Aizawa monologued, the country's still trying to pretend we're all created equal by not letting those with the most power excel. It's not rational. One day, the Ministry of Education will learn. Every student looked worried at what they'd be doing. Midoriya, you managed to get the most points on the entrance exam. What was your farthest distance throw with a softball when you were in junior high? Aizawa asked Izuku. 57 meters, I think. Izuku answered. Right. Try doing it with your quirk. Aizawa instructed. Anything goes, just stay in the circle. Izuku started thinking about what quirk he should use. Gummy body would give his throw more power, while heart bomb would do the same thing. Then there was Sparks Fly. Sparks Fly was a whole other story on what it could do. Hurry up, we don't have all day. Aizawa scolded Izuku. Sorry, sir. I just have a quirk that lets me store other quirks within me, and currently I'm torn between which one to use. Izuku apologized. 
we'll take this as a secondary training exercise. It'll help sharpen your mind and improve your decision-making skills. Aizawa gave Izuku some advice. Izuku then remembered that he could use combinations of his quirks. Gummy body plus heart bomb plus sparks fly. Izuku stepped back a little. He powered up his left hand, Eka the one he was holding the softball in, using heart bomb, and then threw it using gummy body and used sparks fly to keep its momentum up. 750 meters, that's impressive. Aizawa pointed out, all of you need to know your maximum capabilities. It's the most rational way of figuring out your potential as a pro hero. I want to go, that looks like fun, one student yelled out, excited. This is what I'm talking about, using our quirks as much as we want, another student yelled. So this looks fun, huh? Aizawa then looked annoyed. You have three years here to become a hero. You think it's all going to be games and playtime? No, sir, most of the class groaned. Today you'll compete in eight physical tests to gauge your potential. Aizawa explained. Whoever comes in last has none and will be expelled immediately. The entire class gasped. But that isn't fair. We got accepted into this school fair and square, Achako retaliated. Oh, really? Well, do you know what else isn't fair? Natural disasters. Villain attacks. Catastrophic events that can wipe out entire cities. Aizawa scolded. Life is full of unfairness. It's a hero's job to prevent that unfairness. Now don't forget. Go beyond. Plus ultra style. Everyone then nodded, agreeing with Aizawa. Don't make me regret this. Aizawa gritted his teeth together. Now that you know what you're in for, let the test begin. The first test was a 50-meter dash. Izuku watched as the boy with the legs that looked like engines and the girl with frog-like features took their places at the starting line. He was interested in seeing how his classmates did and what all of their quirks were, though he could tell at a glance that both of them had mutant-type quirks. Their times were impressive though, the engine leg guy clocked in at just over 3 seconds and the frog girl at about 5 and a half seconds. Watching his classmates run, and in some cases, use their quirks in interesting ways to complete the 50 meters, really made Izuku wish he had his notebook right now. Achako finished in just over 7 seconds and seemed pleased with her result. The fawn-haired girl and the pink girl both finished at just over 5 seconds though the pink girl appeared to be skating on some kind of substance coming from her feet, which Izuku thought was a good way to complete the test. Finally, it was Izuku's turn. He was up against a purple-haired guy who looked like he didn't sleep much. Izuku thought hard about what combination of quirks he should use. It wasn't long before he was forced to settle with a combination of weight loss, heart bomb, and hot wings. While running, Izuku used heart bomb on his feet and formed two flaming wings on his back, while also becoming weightless because of weight loss, getting to the end in 351 seconds and the other guy getting there in 501 seconds. The next test was a grip strength test. Izuku looked at one of his classmates who was masked up and looked a bit like an octopus and knew he needed a combination of his strength enhancing quirks. But Izuku didn't really have any quirks that enhanced his strength except for one rhyming reason. I need to be strong, so my plans of becoming a hero don't go wrong. Izuku whispered to himself, going up to the grip strength tester thing. Rhyming reason boosted Izuku a significant amount. Not as much as the octopus guy's current strength, but it was pretty impressive. Taking the test, Izuku scored 342 16 kgs, which wasn't much, but then felt proud of himself after seeing some of the other participants' scores, particularly the guy he faced off against in the 50-meter dash. He had seemed to be using his quirk, but by the looks of it, it was hurting him. Izuku wanted to know what the guy's quirk was, so he used evaluate on the guy. By the looks of things, he has two quirks, one called brainwash and the other called one for all. Izuku thought to himself, Brainwash allows him to mind control anyone who replied to him in a conversation, and one for all allows him to stockpile an enormous amount of raw power, allowing him to significantly enhance all of his physical abilities to a superhuman level. Though it clearly has a strain on his body, and I'm also getting readings of other quirks. Though the readings of those are very fuzzy. I knew I should have gotten my notebook, looks like I'll have to remember his quirks until I can get to it. The next test was a standing long jump. While Izuku was waiting for his turn, he was reading the two quirk guys one for all quirk. Black Whip allows him to generate tendrils of black energy from his body that are good for capturing opponents. 
Danger Sense, allows him to detect threats in the surrounding area. Float, allows him to suspend himself in mid-air, granting him flight. Izuku evaluated, thinking to himself. Smoke Screen, allows him to generate a thick cloud of smoke from his body. Fa Jin, allows him to build up kinetic energy and expel it. Gear Shift, allows him to change the speed and or velocity of any target he touches, including himself. This allows him to greatly accelerate his own speed and or the velocity of his target and enhance the impact force of his own strikes. Hair manipulation allows him to manipulate his hair, though he can't manipulate the length of his hair. Midoriya, you're up. Aizawa told Izuku, bringing him back to reality. Izuku nodded and walked up to where he was supposed to go. Izuku used a combination of heart bomb and gummy body and jumped across the sandpit. Once it was the one for all guy's turn, Izuku had noticed something. The guy couldn't control his own quirk. I wonder if it has to do with the fact that he has two quirks, Izuku theorized. I know that when I use more than five of my quirks, it's hard to control and it can even make me fall unconscious. I could possibly ask him about his quirks when the day ends, as long as he isn't expelled. The next test was the repeated side steps. Izuku didn't really use any of his quirks for this test, since he had used Heart Bomb a lot that day and didn't want to go through any of its side effects. Though Izuku did notice that the one for all guy was doing pretty well, even though his quirk was destroying him. There were three more tests before going back to the ball throw, but they weren't that hard and were pretty forgettable. As for the ball throw, Izuku had already done it, so he didn't need to go again. The most interesting things that happened were that Ochako had scored infinity and was the entire thing when the one for all guy went up. Ofa had tried to throw the ball, but he fails to do so. What happened to my quirk? Ofa asked Aizawa. I erased your quirk. Clearly you can't control your quirk. Aizawa scolded. Then Izuku realized who Aizawa really was. Oh my gosh, it's pro hero, eraser head, Izuku fanboyed. Yeah, it's me. My quirk allows me to erase someone's quirk by just looking at them. Aizawa sighed before looking back at Ofa. So you erased my quirks, I mean quirk. Only one. Ofa guessed. Izuku didn't get why the Ofa guy would lie about having only one quirk. If he had multiple quirks, why bother lying? Was it because if he said his quirk was only one, they'd think less of him and maybe expel him? But if the Ofa guy was able to hide his true identity and had been able to pass the practical exams, then maybe they wouldn't. Your quirk has a big drawback on you. Clearly you aren't fit to be a hero. Aizawa said to the Ofa guy, If I was the one that was judging who made it into UA, you wouldn't be here right now. Your quirk makes you a liability in battle. But that's what quirk training is for if I try my hardest and never stop training, I'll be able to stop injuring myself with my quirk and become a hero. Ofa pleaded. All right, I'll give you another chance, but if you injure yourself badly, Aizawa scolded, bringing back Ofa's quirk. You'll expel me, I'll accept your challenge, and I promise my quirk won't do so much damage. Whatever, just do it already. You have your quirks back. We don't have all day. Aizawa instructed. Taking Aizawa's advice into account, Ofa throws his pitch, and at the last second he concentrates one for all through his fingertips. 70305 impressive. Aizawa pointed out. Now with that, it's time for the rankings. I'll be showing them all at once so I don't have to explain about any of them. Momo Yairazu first. Izuku Midoriya second. Katsuki Bakugo third. Tenya Aida fourth. Fumikage Takoyami fifth. Mizo Shoji 6th, Shoto Todoroki 7th, Aijiro Kirishima 8th, Mina Ashido 9th, Ochako Yororaka 10th, Koji Koda 11th, Rikido Sato 12th, Suyu Asui 13th, Yuga Ayama 14th, Hanta Siro 15th, Denki Kaminari 16th, Kayoka Jiro 17th, Toru Hagakir 18th, Mishiro Ujur 19th, Hitoshi Shinso 20th, Turns out, the Ofa guy's name was Hitoshi Shinso. Momo had walked up to Izuku. I congratulate you on getting second place, Midoriya. Momo congratulated. Thank you, Yayarazu, Izuku thanked. I guess I should congratulate you for getting first. Why, thank you, Momo replied. Hitoshi, however, looked very distraught. They said I couldn't do it, and they were right, Hitoshi mumbled to himself, looking like he was about to cry. It wasn't long before Aizawa spoke up again. I was lying, no one's going home. 
Aizawa laughed. That was just a rational deception to make sure you gave it your all in the tests. Almost everyone gasped. That's it. We're done for the day. Pick up a syllabus in the classroom. Read it over before tomorrow morning. Aizawa instructed. Midoriya Shinso, I want to speak with you both. The rest of you, be good and eat your vegetables or whatever. Once the class left, Izuku and Hitoshi had met up in the classroom so Aizawa could speak to them. Shinso, you're first. Aizawa instructed Shinso walked up to Aizawa. While Izuku was waiting, he used his 23rd quirk radio signal so he wouldn't get bored. Izuku listened to the lastest news about villains, heroes' debuts, and so on. However, Izuku also worried about why Aizawa wanted to talk to him. Could it be that Aizawa was going to congratulate him for getting second? No, maybe he got expelled for something. He was surprised when he saw how serious Aizawa looked. Then again, he didn't really trust anyone else's judgment of people. After what felt like hours, Aizawa spoke. Midoriya, you're up. Aizawa told Izuku. Izuku turned off his quirk and walked up to Aizawa. So, Midoriya, I just wanted to talk to you about your PTSD. Aizawa said to Izuku in a sympathetic way, I think you need some help getting over it. Izuku stared at Aizawa in shock. He hadn't expected that and thought that Aizawa was just talking about his quirk issues. Are you all right? Aizawa questioned. Yes, of course, Izuku quickly answered. Is there anything I can do to help? Izuku didn't know whether to answer truthfully and risk making Aizawa worry about him or lie and tell him there were nothing he could do. In his mind, he wanted to go along with Aizawa's idea that he needed help. After all, Aizawa knew so much more about the problem than he did. If Aizawa offered him any type of therapy, then maybe he could start feeling better. However, he didn't want to admit that he might not feel better if he told Aizawa about it. There is a possibility I might have problems getting better, but it's possible that the help I need wouldn't come until I've healed from my experiences with those villains I've faced all those years ago. Izuku told Aizawa, Also, please don't mention my PTSD to anyone. Aizawa nodded his head. Even if Izuku didn't ask, he still felt that he knew what his reaction would have been. I understand, but remember that I'm here for you if anything happens. I will do everything I can to help you. Aizawa assured. I'm going to consult your mother about the situation as well, so she can give her say in it. Thank you, Aizawa. Izuku bowed his head. Good luck, Midoriya. Aizawa smiled as Izuku walked away. Once Izuku got outside, he noticed that Katsuki was waiting for him. Aiken, I thought you would have gotten home already, Izuku beamed. Nah, thought you could use the company. Katsuki smirked as they began their walk to Izuku's apartment. A little later, Katsuki had asked Izuku something. What did Eraserhead need to talk to you about? Katsuki asked. He wanted to talk to me about my PTSD, Izuku answered. And that there are people who can help me. But I know it won't work. Why not? Katsuki asked, confused. That trauma, it follows me everywhere. Whenever I use my quirks, whenever someone ambushes me, even when someone says that they're going to do something really bad to me, it just takes me back to the trauma Izuku trailed off. That's why I think it'll probably never work. So you're afraid of being treated differently because of it? Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Well, that's stupid. They shouldn't treat you different. Katsuki snapped. They should respect that. It's a weakness. That means we've seen that you aren't weak and you don't need them treating you differently just cause of your trauma. Even if that's true, Kaken, it won't mean that the past hasn't happened. It'll mean that no matter what, it's still gonna affect me. How can I face others after that experience? Can you imagine the mental pain it'd inflict on me, Izuku cried. There's no point trying, and no point crying over spilt milk anyway. I already cried enough tears for myself to fill two entire puddles. No, that's not how it works. When your brain tells you things like that, you can't continue carrying this load around. You need to see a professional. Why, yeah, I'll get around to that one day. A few minutes went by before they arrived at Izuku's apartment. See you tomorrow at training, quirkologist, Katsuki called as he left. By Kagan, Izuku waved. When he reached his apartment, Izuku collapsed on the couch. Once he calmed down, he grabbed an apple and sat up with his legs dangling over the edge of the sofa, his head resting on the armrest. After finishing the apple, Izuku laid back down onto the couch and pulled out the book that he had read earlier. After a chat with his mother during dinner, the sun was setting and Izuku fell asleep. This isn't going to be easy. 
Izuku thought to himself, I don't know if I can handle it. Izuku woke up at 4 a.m. to go to his morning run. He had made it through most of the route, but there were moments where he stopped to catch his breath or slow down. When Izuku had finally finished, he headed to the shower. After getting dressed and brushing his teeth, Izuku decided to try to get his thoughts together. What am I supposed to expect today, Izuku pondered. Maybe the same thing that you've always expected for the past year. More training, but it's going to be harder now. After a few hours passed and Izuku had gotten ready for Yue, said goodbye to his mother and walked to Yue with Katsuki. The two had gotten to class a bit early, the only student being there besides the two was Tenya Ada. Nidoriya, Bakugo, how lovely it is to see you, Tenya exclaimed, chopping the air. Soon Aizawa had walked into the room, surprised at Katsuki and Tenya's presence. Mr. Aizawa, I believe you are a little early. Tenya pointed out, chopping the air again. I am aware, Ida. I just want to talk with Midoriya outside for a moment. Aizawa explained, taking Izuku outside. Once outside, Aizawa closed the door behind them. You wanted to talk to me? Izuku asked concerned. Aizawa gave Izuku one of his usual blank stares. I just wanted to let you know what'll happen today. Aizawa informed. You'll have the normal classes like English and math, and then after that you'll have basic hero studies. Also, with the permission from your mother, you've been signed up for counseling sessions with Hound Dog. You'll have your first session with him this afternoon. Really? You're signing up for that? Izuku gasped. Of course. Aizawa confirmed. Now, I need you to promise me something. Okay, Izuku nodded. Do not hesitate to speak up if you feel uncomfortable and don't try and push yourself to talk. You need time to heal from all your experiences, you also need to take breaks to allow your body time to heal from the trauma. Izuku thought about all the words Aizawa said and sighed. He didn't really know what to say to reassure his teacher. You can always ask me anything, you know. Aizawa told him, I'll always be happy to help you out. I know. Thank you, Aizawa. Izuku smiled grateful. All right. You can head back into the classroom now. I have some other stuff to do before the day officially begins, but feel free to do whatever, just as long as it doesn't break the rules. Aizawa told Izuku, walking off. Izuku walked back into the classroom, taking his seat. Katsuki then walked up to Izuku. So, what did a razorhead need to talk to you about this time? Katsuki asked. Izuku whispered something in Katsuki's ear. He told me about how the day would go, and that I'm going to be seeing Hound Dog this afternoon. Izuku whispered, not wanting Tenya to hear, since it was none of his business. So, are you actually going to be seeing him or what? Katsuki asked, curious. I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. Izuku shrugged. But I think you're right. I should try talking to Hound Dog about what I've gone through. If I get scared and start panicking again or lose control of my emotions because of those flashbacks, then it could make things worse and I could hurt someone. Or worse, I might kill someone. That's fucking bullshit. That shit wasn't your fault. That was caused by something else. Katsuki scowled. If anything, it's the person who tried to kill you. Not anyone else who has done nothing wrong. Katsuki, I'm serious. Izuku shook his head. Fuck. Look, I know that what you've been put through is traumatic, and you should have been treated for it, but you weren't. It's no one's fucking fault but whoever the fuck did it. Katsuki growled, anger clearly visible in his eyes as he continued. If anyone is allowed to blame anybody for your trauma, it shouldn't be you. You didn't deserve any of that shit. Now stop blaming yourself, okay? Katsuki was angry at the person that tried to hurt Izuku, but he couldn't bring himself to blame Izuku for it either. After everything that Izuku has dealt with, he deserves better. Thanks, Kaken. I'm glad that you understand. Izuku replied gratefully. Don't worry, Quirkologist. I won't ever let anybody do something like that again. Katsuki declared while smiling. As Izuku started thinking about what Aizawa had told him, a certain phrase began to flash through his mind. He hadn't been able to figure out what it meant, but it kept coming back to him. It's not your fault. It's okay. You didn't do anything wrong. All these words seem familiar, and yet, why? Why does it feel so real? Before Izuku could even think about what those words actually mean, he heard his name being called Midoriya. Upon hearing his name being called, Izuku turned his head around to find Ochako running towards him. 
She ran straight into Izuku, nearly knocking both of them over. As she landed onto her feet and stood up, she placed her hands on both of Izuku's shoulders. Oh, good morning, Yuraka, Izuku greeted. Good morning, Ochako greeted. How are you feeling, Midoriya? Ah, oh, fine, Izuku lied. And yourself? I'm all right, thank you. I was hoping we could talk sometime later, though. Right now, I have to tell you about something important, Ochako exclaimed. Oh, uh, yeah, sure, Izuku agreed, unsure of what she was trying to say. About what? Well, I was wondering if you would like to come to lunch with us today. Ochako smiled. I'd love to, Izuku exclaimed, excited. Is everyone else going to? Yeah. Tsu, Ashido, Sato, and Kaminari. Ochako smiled, knowing that Izuku would enjoy being with the group more than by himself. And I'm also going to ask Ada if he'd like to join us too. Can I ask if Bakugo would like to join us? Izuku asked. Sure, if you want to, Ochako smiled. Okay, Izuku smiled. Thank you, Yuraka, for inviting me and asking. No problem, Midoriya. See you later. Ochako waved and went to greet others in the class. After going through the normal classes, lunch came around. Izuku and Katsuki had met up with Ochako. Together, they had sat at a table with Tsuyu, Mina, Rikido, Denki, and Tenya. As Lunch Rush started preparing lunch, everyone talked amongst themselves and enjoyed their food, chatting happily with each other. The conversations were light, friendly, and happy until Mina asked Izuku something. Midoriya, what did Mr. Aizawa want to talk to you about yesterday? Mina asked Izuku. Izuku was flustered by this question, but before he could answer, Katsuki defended him. That's none of your business, acid face. Katsuki stated, crossing his arms. Quirkologist isn't obligated to share his secrets if you want to make Quirkologist uncomfortable. Katsuki was then cut off by Izuku. Kekin, it's okay, she probably wasn't aware. Izuku interrupted. But Ishido, it isn't polite to be all nosy like that. If I want to share what Aizawa wanted to talk to me about, I'll share it. But if I don't, I won't. And that's okay. Mina then looked very guilty with what she had asked. Minoriya, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. Mina apologized. I didn't even ask if you wanted to tell me. It's fine, Ashido. There's no harm done. Izuku reassured her. But please note that you don't know what someone else could be going through, so it would be better if you wouldn't ask such personal questions. Mina lowered her head with guilt. I understand that, Midoriya. Mina assured him. I understand what you're saying about privacy. Good to hear it. Izuku smiled. Tenya then spoke up. Midoriya, I get what you're trying to say, but I noticed before homeroom, Aizawa-sensei wanted to speak with you, and when you came back into the classroom, Bakugo asked what he spoke with you about, but you didn't seem as flustered as you were with Ashido. Tenya pointed out. Why is that? Well, Ada, it's because me and Kaken have been friends since we were really young, so I trust him with personal information like that. Izuku explained. I see. Tenya nodded. Though I do apologize if my question was personal in itself. There's no need to apologize for a question like that, Ida. Izuku reassured his new friend. In my opinion, the best way to figure out if a question is personal is if it has to do with something personal in regards to something that has happened to the person that you're asking the question to. For example, if I asked you what your quirk is and what you can do with it, that wouldn't be a personal question. But a question like what a teacher had to talk to you about after class would be a personal question. Denki then raised his hand. But what if you don't know whether or not the question is personal to the person you're asking? Denki asked Izuku. Well, Kaminari, if you aren't sure, then you should start the question with, if it's okay for me to ask, and then ask your question, and if the person finds the question personal, then they don't have to answer. But if they do answer, and they don't find the question personal, then it's important to listen to the person's response. Izuku explained. Now I have a question, Rikido said. How should I respond if I'm ever asked a personal question? That's a hard question, Sato, but I think I might know. Izuku replied, If the question is personal, but the person isn't aware of it, you can just tell them that the question is too personal for you. But if the person is aware, then you have the right to be offended and also correct them if they don't get why you're offended. Does it also apply if the person is trying to pick on you, Tsuyu asked? It does, Asui, Izuku replied. I'd prefer it if you called me Tsu. 
Tsuyu corrected. Oh, sorry, as I mean Su. Izuku apologized. As I was saying, you have no right to feel uncomfortable, and no person should try to take those rights away from you. Ochako smiled to herself because of how she could be making her own friend group. You know, guys, I honestly wouldn't mind hanging out again. Ochako spoke up. I agree, we should hang out again sometime. Izuku agreed. Sure, why not? Though I do have to warn everyone, I'm not too good with names, so I'm definitely going to call you all nicknames based on your quirks. Katsuki warned. So that's why you call Midori a quirkologist. Ochako realized. After lunch had ended, it was time for hero training. Everyone had already gotten changed, they waited at Ground Beta's entrance. Suddenly, the door to the building opened. Coming out was the symbol of peace, All Might. I heard rumors about All Might being a teacher here, but I didn't think it was true, Izuku mumbled to himself. Izuku's hero costume was a black, sleeveless bodysuit with green lines on it, black elbow pads and knee pads, and a respirator around his neck. Welcome to the most important class at Yua High. Think of it as Heroing 101. All Might announced, Here you will learn the basics of being a pro, and what it means to fight in the name of good. Ochako walked up to Izuku. You look good in that costume, Midoriya. Ochako complimented. I should have been more specific about what I wanted. Well, you look good in your costume either way. Izuku blushed before noticing Katsuki, specifically his gauntlets that looked like grenades. Izuku had walked up to Katsuki. Hey, Kaken, what are those gauntlets for? Izuku asked. Quirkologist, I'm going to keep it simple with you. Five words. It's a surprise, you'll see. Katsuki smirk. Remember this, you won't always know what you're dealing with, but once you know, use that knowledge to your advantage. Izuku smiled at this response. Not that he liked it when Katsuki kept secrets from him, but it was because he always loved it whenever Katsuki gave him advice. All Might cleared his throat to catch everyone's attention. All right, you're all red no, so let's begin. All Might declared. Most of the villain fights you see on the news take place outside. However, statistically speaking, run-ins with the most dastardly evildoers take place indoors. Think about it. Backroom deals, home invasions, secret underground lairs. Truly intelligent criminals stay hidden in the shadows. For this training exercise, you'll be split into teams of good guys and bad guys and fight two-on-two -two indoor battles. But remember, you can't just punch a robot this time. You're dealing with actual people now. Remember, go beyond plus ultra style. The entire class got exited, especially Hitoshi and Izuku. Hitoshi's hero costume is a short-sleeved black shirt, gray shoulder pads, fishnet arm sleeves, and fingerless gloves. His pants are also black with purple rings around the bottom. The pairings were as followed. Izuku Midoriya and Ochako Yuraraka Team A. Hitoshi Shinso and Mizo Shoji Team B. Shoto Todoroki and Momo Yayarazu Team C. Katsuki Bakugo and Tenya Aida Team D. Yuga Ayama and Mina Ashido Team E. Rikido Sato and Koji Koda Team F. Denki Kaminari and Kayoka Jiru Team G. Fumikage Takoyami and Suyu Asui Team H. Mashiro Ajiro and Toru Hagakir Team I. Ajiro Kirishima and Hantasiro Team J. Looks like we're together for this one, Midoriya. Ochako smiled. Izuku smiled to himself. This had been one of the reasons why he enjoyed spending time with his friends. He was lucky enough to spend almost every moment with them. As Izuku thought to himself, it seemed as though the others were thinking along the same line of thought. The situation is as follows. The villains are hiding a payload inside the building and the heroes must secure it or defeat the villains within a time limit. The villains are granted victory if they successfully protect the payload or capture the heroes. All Might explained. First up, Team A as the heroes and Team D as the villains. Soon, Team D was instructed to go inside of the building first. So, this is what we're supposed to be protecting, Tenya pointed out the fake missile. Looks like it, Katsuki said. We're going to need a plan to make sure we don't let Midoriya and Yuraraka near the missile. Tenya explained. Midoriya said during lunch that you and him have known each other since you were young. How much do you know about his quirk? All I know is that he can steal the power of emitter and transformation quirks, and he can just straight up copy mutant quirks. Katsuki explained, he also has at least 24 quirks already stockpiled. 
I see. How much do you know about those quirks? Tenya asked. Not too much. Katsuki lied in order to not reveal any personal information about Izuku. That does make sense since quirk usage without a license is illegal. Tenya nodded. All right, I think I have a plan. Katsuki smirked. Meanwhile, Izuku and Ochako were looking at a map of the building. This building is so big, hopefully we don't get lost while trying to navigate this place. Ochako admitted, looking at the map in front of her. Don't worry about it, Yuraka. Izuku assured, placing his hand over hers and giving it a gentle squeeze. I've got your back. Let's just focus on getting to the bomb safely. Once the five minutes of preparation was up, Team A entered the building. Katsuki suddenly ambushes them, emerging from an adjoining corridor, ready to attack. Izuku froze, flashing back to the first time he was ambushed by one of the villains that tried to kidnap him. Come on, kid. The League is waiting for you. You'll be better off coming with the League. He's waiting, Izuku. You wouldn't want to disappoint anyone, Izuku. You're better off with us with him. As soon as Katsuki could throw his first attack, Achako pulled Izuku and herself out of the way. Soon, Izuku snapped back into reality. It's only Kaken. It's only Kaken. Izuku continuously told himself, Are you okay, Midoriya? You spaced out for a moment there. Achako asked worriedly as she and Izuku started running. Why, yeah, I'm fine, Izuku lied. Izuku activated a combination of tentacles, hold up, and sparks fly. Izuku reached one of his tentacles and used hold up on Katsuki, keeping him in place, using sparks fly on himself and Katsuki, sending Katsuki flying in the opposite direction. Yuraka, you go capture the missile. I'll keep fighting, Izuku planned out a strategy. Soon, Izuku deactivated all of the quirks he was using and charged at Katsuki. Well, 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 if it isn't Izuku Midoriya, how nice of you to join us again today. Katsuki pretended. Izuku thought of another combination to use. Chameleon plus rock plates plus heart bomb. Izuku turned himself invisible while also forming invisible rock plates on himself while enhancing his jumps using heart bomb. Without Katsuki seeing him, Izuku had punched Katsuki in the face. What the fuck? Katsuki yelled in disbelief. Now, Kaken, let's talk some business. Izuku revealed himself as he punched Katsuki in the gut, leaving him breathless. Before Katsuki could recover his balance, Izuku had already kicked him in the stomach again. Let's see what your gauntlets can do, Izuku smirked. You really want to know what I can do, huh, Quirkologist? Katsuki smirked. These gauntlets of mine allow me to build up sweat over time and shoot them out. Like a grenade, Izuku gasped. Katsuki smirked, using his explosive sweat on Izuku. Izuku then activated rock plates once more, protecting himself. Why the hell am I fighting someone who uses sweat to build up sweat? Izuku cried as he threw several punches towards Katsuki, managing to force him back. And why would I tell you? Because I'm enjoying watching you squirm under my feet. Katsuki answered, dodging Izuku's attacks. Suddenly, Katsuki jumped behind Izuku and grabbed the boy by his waist before throwing him over his head, slamming him against a wall. Izuku groaned in pain as Katsuki lifted him up by his neck and slammed him down. Before Izuku could regain control of himself, a large explosion was fired from Katsuki's left side, exploding the floor. Katsuki stood over Izuku while still holding him hostage in the air. I'm not done yet, Midoriya. I haven't even begun. Katsuki grinned. Izuku struggled desperately against Katsuki's grip, but in vain. Katsuki kept holding tight onto Izuku, causing his breathing to quicken, and blood began seeping through Izuku's fingers. Izuku then activated Ignite throughout his body, turning himself immune to Katsuki's attacks. Meanwhile, Ochako had made it to the room containing the missile where Tenya was guarding it. Soon, Tenya noticed Ochako. Midoriya, I'm up at the missile, what do I do? Ochako asked Izuku through her earpiece. Try to buy yourself some time, I'll see what I can do from down here. Izuku instructed through his earpiece. I'll try, but I can't hold him off for long, Ochako stated. Ochako had jumped in and waited for Izuku's move. I knew you would come here alone the instant that Bakugo ran off by himself and engaged with Midoriya. Tenya pointed out, Your quirk allows you to float anything that you touch, but I've prepared for that. By hiding every object in this room so you have nothing to use against me, do-gooder, my dastardly tricks have rendered you helpless. You've blundered, hero. 
Meanwhile, Izuku had punched the floor above him, using a combination of rock plates, heart bomb, and ignite, destroying the floors above him, including the floor that Achako and Tenya were on. What did you do to the floor above us, Midoriya? What's happening? Achako panicked as soon as she heard explosions being released from below. Don't worry about it, Ochako. You can use your quirk now, Izuku exclaimed while using regeneration on himself because he used a combination of more than two transformation quirks. Ochako had made a nearby pillar float and used it as a shield against Tenya's attacks. Caught in the onslaught of rubble, Tenya is unable to stop Ochako from using her quirk on herself again to jump the hole in the ground, grabbing the weapon and securing the victory for Time. Team A walked back inside the room to find Katsuki lying on the ground and surrounded by debris. Tenya ran up to Katsuki, picked him up bridal style and ran outside. So you two won? Katsuki asked Izuku and Ochako. The two of them nodded. Well, good game. Quirkologist, I hope my acting skills will help you with that thing. To be honest, your acting seemed kind of real. Izuku admitted. Yeah, the acting was Engine's idea. Katsuki chuckled. Soon, Team A and Team D had made it back to the rest of the class. Well done, Team A and Team D. You really put up a fight in there, All Might congratulated. Everyone applauded both teams. So, up next, All Might announced. Team B and Team I. I hope you can both put on as amazing as a show as the first two teams. After Team A and Team D had faced off against each other, it was time for Team B and Team I to face off against each other. Team B served as the heroes, while Team I were the villains. Once in the payload, Mashirao and Toru knew they had to strategize. But Jiro, let's get serious. I'm gonna take off all my clothes and totally disappear. Toru strategized. Hagakure's using her quirk to our advantage, but it's kinda weird to know there's a naked girl standing by me. Mashirao thought to himself, what exactly am I supposed to do here? But just don't look, okay? Toru advised. What's the difference? Meshiro asked, slightly chuckling. You know, it's kind of nerve-wracking being up here. Toru pointed out. I kind of agree, especially because of the previous fight. Meshiro agreed. Though at least we all have only one quirk. And that Shinzo's quirk hurts him, so this'll be a two-on-one match, Toru exclaimed. Meanwhile, Team B had made their way into the building. Mizo had used his dupli arms to create several ears. My quirk allows me to, to reproduce any of my body parts, Mizo explained. So you can use your extra ears to detect what our opponents are planning, Hitoshi presumed. Indeed, I should be able to hear the commotion coming from the payload. Mizo confirmed, concentrating on his duplicated ears. All right, I can hear them. Hagakure has taken her clothes off, and I think she'll be coming for us. We'll have to be extra careful then, Hitoshi nodded. The two started sneaking around trying not to make any noise or attract attention. So what do I do, Hitoshi thought to himself. I think that if I try to use one for all again, I'll cause too much chaos. But if I use just brainwashing, everyone will get suspicious. I have to think of a way around this. Soon, they didn't realize it, but Toru was standing right in front of the two. Unexpectedly, Hitoshi was punched in the face. Oh, ugh, Hitoshi groaned as Toru grinned to herself. Shoji, did you just punch me in the face? No, Mizo bluntly replied. Then who, oh no, Hitoshi realized something. Hagakure, you fell right into my trap. You don't know where I, Toru laughed before being brainwashed by Hitoshi. Sit down. Hitoshi commanded as Toru did that. Now sit still while I wrap you up with this capture tape. As Hitoshi eventually started tying Toru up, Mizo looked impressed. That's one powerful quirk you've got there, Shinso. Mizo complimented Hitoshi. And you didn't even injure yourself that time. Oh yeah, it's a part of my quirk. Hitoshi lied, finishing what he was doing and unbrainwashing Toru. No fair, Toru yelled. Soon, Mizo and Hitoshi had started running. Do you think Ojiro is also coming out? Hitoshi pondered to Mizo. From what I heard when I was listening in, Ojiro will most likely still be protecting the bomb. Mizo explained. So, it'll be a two-on-one fight then. The two eventually were greeted by Mashiro, who was in a battle stance. So, you got past Hagakure, huh? Mashiro glared. Well, I might be outnumbered, but that doesn't mean I'll give up so easily. Oh, really? Hitoshi asked. 
Yi Mashirao was then brainwashed by Hitoshi. Come out here. Hitoshi ordered Mashirao doing as he said, Good boy. Mizo looked between Mashirao and Hitoshi with confusion. He thought it would be better to stay out of this fight. Hitoshi had then walked up to the bomb and touched it, securing Team B the win. After that fight, the rest of the fights were as followed. Fumikage Takoyami and Suyu Asui Team H Heroes vs. Ajiro Kirishima and Hanta Siro Team J Villains. Winners, Heroes. Denki Kaminari and Kayoka Jaro Team G Heroes vs. Momo Yairazu and Shoto Todoroki Team C Villains. Winners, Villains. Yuga Aoyama and Mina Ashido Team E Heroes vs. Rikido Sato and Koji Koda Team F Villains. Winners, Heroes. Now that all of the teams had gone once, All Might had gotten an idea. Now we're gonna switch things up, All Might announced. For those who were heroes, you'll be villains. For those who were villains, you'll be heroes. Izuku didn't know how to feel about this. His past trauma was caused by villains trying to attack him, or rather kidnap him. He didn't want to be like that. He just wanted this day to be over. He wanted to go home. He just wished that dealing with his trauma was easy. He wished that being a hero was easy. But it wasn't. Heroes have to deal with villains all of the time. Some days Izuku just thinks that he isn't fit to be a hero. Heroes are supposed to be strong, not mentally weak like he is. Uh, Mr. All Might, sir, Izuku raised his hand. I don't feel very good, can I sit out of this, please? Nonsense. Heroes have to deal with things like these all of the time. If you want to be a hero, you'll have to go into this like a true hero, or a villain in your case, young Midoriya. All Might replied, denying Izuku's request. Maybe All Might was right. If Izuku wanted to be a hero, he had to be a villain. So Izuku sighed and nodded. Prepare to die. Izuku prepare to die, Izuku told himself. The first up team FVS team A, All Might announced. Izuku sighed a sigh of relief. His team was going up first, so he didn't need to worry about going later. As he and Ochako walked into the payload, they decided to talk strategy, among other things. Midoriya, do you have a quirk that can create constructs? Ochako asked Izuku. No, but I do have a quirk that allows me to shoot out a sticky slime that sticks to anything. Izuku explained. That's as twice as good as what I was going for, Ochako cheered, making Izuku blush. Are you able to put it everywhere so it's harder to get up here? Of course, Izuku nodded, going to do just that. Jelly surprise plus hot wings plus gunpoint. Izuku formed two flaming wings on his back and flew around everywhere in the building, shooting Jelly Surprise and used Gunpoint to shoot it out accurately. Then after doing that, Izuku made his way back into the payload. Okay, I did it. Izuku smiled, deactivating his quirks. Good, now we just wait and see what happens. Achako nodded. Soon, after the five minutes of prep time was up, Team F entered the building. This might be a little bit harder than I thought it would be, Rikido thought to himself, mumbling. Then again. Rikido then looked at Koji, who seemed nervous. Don't let this get to you, partner. Rikido advised him. It's only a training exercise, it's not real. Koji then nodded as the two walked into the building. They had noticed that almost the entire area had been covered in Izuku's jelly surprise. Oh, oh, Rikido gulped. Do you think they're trying to capture us? Koji shrugged in a way that meant, I don't know. When they reached the elevator shaft, narrowly avoiding the slime, the pair could hear multiple echoes from above. That sound came from above, Rikido whispered. Should we go in? Koji nodded. The duo quickly ran up the shaft and towards the top, taking cover under the ledge. As soon as they got up, they began their search for Team A. So what's your quirk again? Rikido asked Koji. I can control animals with my voice. Koji signed. But you don't talk much, or rather at all. Rikido pointed out, Koji nodding. Well, you should try to talk more. Maybe then people will notice you. Koji nodded. Team F had soon made their way around, still looking for Team A. Meanwhile, Izuku and Ochako were talking while protecting the bomb. So how did you get all of your quirks? Ochako asked Izuku, making him uncomfortable. Let's just say that I got them from certain misadventures. Izuku replied, flustered. Ochako didn't realize that she accidentally brought up bad memories that he hadn't exactly spoken about yet. However, Ochako felt guilty about it, so she went with it, knowing that Izuku wouldn't have minded it. It wasn't long until Ochako heard something. 
They must be this way, there's the most slime around here. A voice whisper yelled, it was hard to tell, but it was obviously Rikido since everyone knew by this point that Koji didn't speak, but signed instead. This made Ochako very nervous, she didn't know how long the jelly surprise would last. So what's the plan? Izuku asked. Ah, uh, Ochako stuttered, trying not to have a panic attack. Jay, just try to stay on guard, okay? Izuku nodded. The two waited quietly for Team F's arrival. It had been a while since either one of the two had heard of Team F's whereabouts, so they assumed that they must have been trapped in Izuku's jelly surprise. Soon before Team F had a chance to come up with a plan, time was up. Team wins, All Might announced through the loudspeaker. After both Team N and Team F had eventually exited the building, with Izuku having to free Rikido and Koji from his jelly surprise, the rest of the battles had happened. When Hitoshi and Mizo went up as villains, they faced off Ajiro and Hanta, who were heroes. Team J won the match because Hanada managed to capture both Hitoshi and Mizo with his tape quirk, keeping them distracted, while Ajiro captured the bomb while Team B was distracted. Afterwards, Fumikage and Su went up, this time as villains, up against Meshiro and Toru who were heroes this time round. Team I won this match since Mashiro kept Su busy, while Fumikage had searched for Toru, who was using her initial nude strategy, and managed to secure the bomb, though nobody actually saw her. After that, Shoto and Momo had gone up against Denki and Kayoka, however the roles were reversed, with Team C being the heroes and Team G being villains. Team C won this match because of their superior quirks being able to overpower Kayoka and Denki. Then the last fight occurred. This time, Katsuki and Tenya as the heroes and Aoyama and Mina as the villains. In the payload, Mina had tried to think of a strategy, but couldn't think of anything. I have some doubts about our opponents. Mina admitted. Our quirks aren't going to help us. What makes you think that, Ashido Aoyama asked his teammate. Well, our opponents seem more experienced and confident in their fighting style. Mina pointed out. If we take too many risks and don't focus enough during the fights, then we'll end up hurt if we're taken advantage of. H.M. hummed in thought. Well, in that case, let's concentrate on our offense. Yes, let's take advantage of our opponent's weaknesses, Mina cheered. Indeed, Ayama nodded. Meanwhile, Katsuki and Tenya were standing right outside of the building. So this is what it's like from the hero's perspective. Katsuki muttered. We'll be able to take down Acid Face and Naval Laser easy. Then the match had started. Katsuki and Tenya ran into the building. Tenya followed Katsuki who blasted himself ahead, though Tenya managed to keep up with him because of his engine legs. What do you think their strategy is? Tenya asked Katsuki. I'm guessing they're going to use their quirks. Katsuki answered simply. Tenya nodded in agreement. Soon, the two had made it up to the payload, but they had noticed that neither of them looked very prepared. Don't come any closer, or I'll dissolve you with my acid, Mina exclaimed, preparing to shoot out some of her acid. Is this the extent to which this plan has gone? Katsuki wondered, glaring at his opponents. He shot forward towards Mina, intending to destroy her acid. Once he got close to her, Katsuki grabbed one of her feet, lifting up and using his explosions to propel herself upwards and away from the building. Oh shit! Katsuki cursed under his breath. Shit 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 fucking shit! Katsuki tried to pull Tenya up after him and failed miserably. Damn it, he growled, holding the hand that held onto Tenya's leg. Bakugo, are you alright? Tenya asked worriedly. Ho oh, live, bastard! Katsuki rolled his eyes. Suddenly, Mina shot some more acid down at Katsuki, hitting his hands causing him to lose grip on Tenya. Tenya quickly shot forward, grabbing onto Katsuki's foot as well. Thank goodness you stopped me. Tenya panted. Now let's make sure you stay down this time. Whatever. Katsuki grumbled as he allowed Tenya to float him to the ground. After he landed on the floor, Tenya quickly moved to stand behind Katsuki and placed a hand on his shoulder. Once Tenya was satisfied that he was safe, he turned around and faced Mina. Well, have you given up now? Katsuki roared. TCH of course not, Mina snorted, readying another attack. Mina shot acid at Katsuki, who dodged, sending an explosion towards Aoyama, who was distracted by Tenya. The explosion sent Aoyama flying back, smashing into a wall behind him. While that had caused him to be knocked unconscious, it didn't stop Mina's attack. 
she sent another wave of acid towards Katsuki, hitting his left arm. Fuck, Katsuki yelled, pulling out his hand from his burning arm. How dare you touch him, Tenya screamed at Mina, charging forward and throwing a punch at her face, only to miss due to Katsuki holding him back. Shut the fuck up, you idiot, Katsuki screamed, glaring at the blonde boy, who continued to scream at Mina. While Mina was distracted by Katsuki and Aoyama was left unconscious, Tenya had successfully secured the bomb. Team D wins, All Might announced. Once everyone was together, All Might had made a statement. Now see here, you've now experienced what it's like to fight villains, even though they weren't real. All Might stated, Pro heroes have to deal with villains all the time, but you should know, if this were to happen once you become pro heroes, there would have to be much more to take into account. Can anyone tell me what things? Momo raised her hand. Where the bomb is being kept, what civilians are around the building the bomb is being kept, what villains are guarding the bomb, who your allies are in the situation, and where the building is located. Momo listed off. That is correct, young Yayarazu. When all of those are taken into account, a good strategy is needed to secure victory. All Might explained. Though I do have a few notes about your performances. For one young Midoriya, when you were on the hero's side, you froze up when confronted by young Bakugo who was on the villain's side. If you want to be a great pro hero one day, you'll have to drop whatever is going on in your mind. And another note ifs that before you were going up as a villain, you tried to leave the class, of which I presume is to skip class before it's over. That is not a good explanation for anyone training to become a hero, and I'll have it followed up with your homeroom teacher. All Might's notes on Izuku were very incorrect. Had he not read the notes on each of the students? And he also told Izuku to drop his flashbacks, clearly meaning he hadn't read the notes on anyone. The rest of All Might's notes weren't as discriminatory in the brain parts of everyone, but the drawbacks of everyone's quirks. Like on his notes for Aoyama, he said, Stop getting stomachaches when you use your quirk. A pro hero never feels pain, so you won't either. Or for Denki, he told him that he needed to snap out of his short-circuiting if he wanted to get past the first week of UA. All Might was a great hero, but just not a good teacher. This was even worse when he didn't read the notes of anyone at all. You are all expected to be strong. If you don't act like it, you'll never be pro-heroes. Also, I even expect any neurodivergent students to act like everyone else, even though they aren't always worth it. All Might yelled in a heroic way, not realizing how hurt he made most of the class. Soon the day was over and the school bell rang. Class dismissed? All Might dismissed the class. Izuku especially felt hurt after that class. He adored All Might to be called not worth it really hurt him, and he knew All Might hurt a lot of the others, and by the looks of it, also Denki, Tsu, and Tenya. Izuku was sure that others were hurt by All Might, but those were the only ones that showed it physically. Izuku walked to Hound Dog's office, both excited and nervous about his appointment with him. Well, Izuku here goes nothing, Izuku told himself. Izuku Midoriya, Hound Dog greeted. I edgy good afternoon, sir. Izuku bowed, making Hound Dog chuckle a little bit. You can just call me Ryo during these sessions. Hound Dog clarified. Hound Dog's office was a nice and cozy one. It was clean, bright, spacious, with comfortable seating a small table with a coffee machine and a couple of bookshelves along the wall with a lot of other useful objects that could help. It looked quite cozy. Hound Dog gestured to Izuku to sit down on a nearby sofa. While Izuku took a seat, Hound Dog leaned against his desk and folded his arms. So, Izuku, you're here today because you have trauma from the past, correct? Izuku gulped. He knew exactly why, but at the same time, it wasn't something that came naturally to him. Yes, Ryo. Izuku anxiously nodded. Are you able to tell me more about this? Hound Dog asked Izuku. When I was about six or seven, I started to be constantly attacked by villains. It mostly stopped happening when I was 14, but every time it happened, I felt like I was going to die. Izuku explained, starting to cry. Hound Dog noticed this and handed Izuku a couple of tissues. I'm sorry for this, I just... Izuku apologized before being cut off by Hound Dog. Midoriya, there is no need to apologize. Hound Dog comforted. Those attacks must have been really hard for you, especially now, where in becoming a hero, you'll have to deal with villains at least one time. Yeah, Izuku sniffed, wiping away his tears. It still hurts me when I think about it, and I wish I could stop thinking about it sometimes.
I understand, but you cannot change the circumstances that happened in your life, but there are ways to make it feel less painful. Hound Dog advised, ways such as talking about them. There are people out there who love you and want you to achieve your dream of becoming a hero. There are, Izuku asked. Yes, there are. Now, you mentioned something called PTSD. Uh, yeah, it's basically just trauma, anxiety, fear of people hurting you, Izuku replied. Is that why you are always so jumpy and anxious? Hound Dog questioned. Yeah, it seems to be a part of it, Izuku sighed. Hound Dog nodded, then spoke again. So what does the PTSD represent? Izuku took a deep breath and spoke. It represents having a problem with someone hurting me or threatening me or killing me. It's kind of difficult to explain, but... Hound Dog listened attentively and nodded. I see. He thought for a moment, tapping his finger against the desk. I'm glad you're willing to discuss this with me, Izuku. Other students like you that I've had aren't willing to be this open about their past trauma, though they shouldn't be forced to talk about the things that make them the most uncomfortable. Hound Dog paused for a second. Do you think you will continue with your therapy sessions with me next session? He asked. Of course, Izuku smiled slightly. Now what exactly do you feel when you have those flashbacks? Hound Dog asked. It's usually a bad feeling. I feel unsafe, scared, and alone. Not to mention how the flashbacks affect my body. Izuku answered. But there is one thing I always try to ignore, and that is seeing the death that happens to those that are around me. That's understandable. Hound Dog reassured. If you'd like to keep going, I suggest taking notes, doing some research, maybe even working through your trauma in a different way. Thank you, sir. But I'm not exactly looking forward to it. I guess I'm afraid that the flashbacks won't ever go away. Maybe the worst part is, I don't know what they mean, I only know that I'm feeling them, and they are awful. Hound Dog pondered for a second. How did you cope in the past with these episodes, he questioned. It wasn't easy. I would get flashbacks a lot back then too, but they weren't nearly as frequent as the flashbacks are right now. I couldn't handle them though. I was just too weak then. Izuku replied, not liking that he brought up such painful memories, but knowing that this might be a chance for him to actually say something important about what is bothering him. And after this happened? My mom helped me out. She bought me medication, talked with me, helped calm me down. But the flashbacks have gotten worse since then, so much worse. I haven't been able to get over those villain attacks. Izuku responded sadly. Hound Dog was concerned for Izuku, and while he didn't know enough about what had caused this, what he did know gave him a sense of foreboding for when this would happen again in the future, or if ever. His instincts were telling him something was wrong. Would you be willing for me to talk to your mother? Izuku froze, staring blankly. Though eventually, he nodded. His mother needed to know what was going on with him, since she loved him dearly, since he was the only company she had left. All right, before we finish up today, I have a few more questions to ask you. Hound Dog stated, as Izuku stood up and walked towards Hound Dog to listen. First question, if I am right, are there many times when you have flashbacks, like multiple times? This question took Izuku aback a bit, since he hadn't actually considered the answer. The truth was yes, Izuku nodded. Are there any ways that you know how to cope with this? Hound Dog asked. Izuku shook his head, meaning no. All the schools I went to before I started high school just told me to stop being traumatized, and they also said that they shouldn't change what they're doing to be inclusive to everyone. They just shrugged me off as an unimportant weakling that'll never be. Izuku stopped himself before finishing saying that last line, a hero. Hound Dog was shocked to hear this. This is definitely not the first time he heard something similar to this. In fact, most people seem to be very dismissive of those that are struggling with mental health issues. He didn't blame people, but he knew it was his job to care for anyone who has one, so he hoped he would find some way to help Izuku. I understand your position, Midoriya. However, that is completely normal. If you do have flashbacks often, please let us know immediately, or we may end up having a long session about them. Do I make myself clear? Hound Dog asked, sounding almost angry now. Izuku quickly nodded, understanding the situation perfectly now. Understandable, Izuku whispered. Hound Dog cleared his throat and got back to asking about the flashbacks. After asking the rest of his questions and gaining more information about Izuku's conditions, the session was over. 
All right, our next session will be on Thursday, and I'll inform your mother and anyone else who needs to know about what we talked about today. Hound Dog informed Izuku. All right, bye Mr. Hound Dog. Izuku waved, exiting Hound Dog's office. Once Izuku was outside, he noticed someone Katsuki was waiting for him. Huh, Kaken, I thought you would have walked home by now. Izuku pointed out. Well, I thought you could use some company, that's all. Katsuki explained. Well, you know, you don't have to always look out for me, I can handle myself just fine. Izuku assured Katsuki. Well, what else can I say? If you get attacked by villains again, I'll be able to help you out. Katsuki smirked, wanting to help his friend out if he ever gets into any trouble. Not much later, in the teacher's lounge, the principal of Yue, Nezu, and All Might in his deflated form, Eika Tashinori Yagi, were talking. How was your first time teaching here at Yua? Nezu asked his colleague. It was quite informative. Tashinori replied. I believe it was a great experience. Wonderful, Nezu exclaimed, taking a sip of tea. Did you remember to read the notes on each of your students? Oh, uh, I was planning on doing that, but I had a lot of work to do, so I didn't have any time to read any of them. Toshinori explained. Well then, you might as well take the time now to read up on class one a while we have our chat, Nezu instructed. Oh, so soon. But don't you think, Toshinori was about to ask, trying to avoid the task that was bestowed upon him. Nonsense. The more you know about them, the more ways you'll know how to help them, Nezu interrupted. Oh, of course, I'm just not used to this new job yet. Toshinori apologized. Would you like me to get you the files or will you? Nezu asked Toshinori. Nah. You know what? I'll go get them. There's no point in looking for something you probably won't find, Nezu walked off. Toshinori was less than pleased. His lack of experience teaching as well as his ableism made it very hard for him to be able to be inclusive when he was teaching. As he trailed off in his thoughts, he was greeted by the sound of a familiar voice. So I heard that you're about to read the notes on my homeroom class, Azawa walked in. Huh. Oh yeah, I didn't read them before, Toshinori replied, before being cut off by Azawa. Before you taught your only class, Azawa interrupted, a stern look on his face. Uh, yeah, but I had a good reason to. How so? I, I was busy. Doing what? Well, I was being a hero for about two and a half hours, then I had to do some stuff around the school, and then I had to get ready to teach my first class. That's not a rational way to be a teacher. Aizawa glared. And do you know how I know you didn't read any of the notes? Momo Yairazu told me that you said neurodivergent students should be like everyone else even if they aren't worth it. Well, you shouldn't have to accommodate the needs of neurodivergent students to make things more inclusive for them. Toshinori replied. If they want to be treated the same way as everyone else, then maybe they should leave. And do you really think that they would? Look around at how many kids are struggling in their classes at Yua. Aizawa challenged. If you want to be a good teacher, then you should know that disasters and villain attacks aren't the only unfairness the world has to face. Neurodivergent people don't choose to be neurodivergent. It doesn't help that society chooses to mock them instead of help them. And yet you're still making exceptions for them. Toshinori sighed, realizing he wasn't getting anywhere with this argument at the moment. I do because that's my job. Aizawa replied simply. But you need to learn a lesson from all these examples too. Don't forget, we've got a lot of kids who struggle with learning. They don't choose to become neurodivergent. We shouldn't exclude them either. It wouldn't be fair to everyone. Aizawa left after this conversation, and Toshinori stayed behind to continue thinking about everything he had heard. Toshinori was dismissive of what his other colleagues said to him. He knew that neurodivergent people don't choose to be neurodivergent, but he didn't know why inclusivity mattered so much. Before long, Nezu came back into the room, holding 20 folders. Here are the notes of all of your students, Nezu announced, giving them all to Toshinori, who put the pile on the table in front of him. So do you have anywhere else to be or Toshinori inquired? No, except for here, where I'll be supervising you while you read the notes. Nezu replied. Toshinori was less than surprised to hear this. After all, Nezu was known to be quite observant. Plus, he had to give Toshinori enough credit to admit that he had been ignoring his own advice, despite telling him to read the notes. Great Toshinori muttered before opening up the first folder. 
Both of them remained quiet. This was until Tashinori got up to Izuku's notes. Name, Izuku Midoriya. Age, 15. Gender, male. Class, 1A. Teachers. Class, 1A teachers. Shota Aizawa Homeroom Teacher. Tashinori Yagi Foundational Hero Studies Teacher. Ectoplasm Mathematics Teacher. Hizashi Yamada English Teacher. Ken Ishiyama Modern Literature Teacher. Medical History. Allergies None. Known Disorders. Autism Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. Additional Note. When Midoriya was a young age, he was constantly attacked by villains. So anything reminding him of those events will trigger his PTSD. Symptoms include being frozen with fear, curling up into a ball, blanking out, and unintentional quirk usage. Please be aware that because of his trauma, handling villains is a hard subject for Midoriya, so feel free to send him out of the room if things are getting out of hand. How interesting. For one, young Midoriya seems to be uh, intellectually impaired and also a total pussycat. Toshinori was interested in Izuku's notes, more of his ableism showing. That definitely explains why he wanted to leave class early today. Nezu just nodded, unsure of how to deal with the number one hero's ableism, though he did try to give Tashinori some advice. If you don't know any terms shown in the files, you can search them up online. Nezu hinted. Of course, Aiden, of course, Tashinori nodded, unable to get Nezu's hint. Meanwhile, Aizawa was still in the halls, thinking to himself. Soon, he'll learn just because someone is neurodivergent, it doesn't mean that people have the right to be ableist. Izuku couldn't believe his situation right now. It was his third day, third day at UA, and he was overstimulated, and it's not like any of his classmates besides Katsuki knew about his autism because he was worried that he'd get bullied, much like how he was in his junior high years. The only reason he hasn't committed suicide was because of Katsuki protecting him and assuring him that he wasn't weird or unnatural or even dare one call him retard, and despite how hard Izuku tried not to let those words affect him, the only thing that caused him to feel that they weren't true was the validation he received from Katsuki. He was grateful to have someone willing to stand up to those bullies for him, even if it was someone mildly aggressive like Katsuki. But back to the point. Izuku was overstimulated. He didn't sleep much last night because of some slight listening in on a phone call his mother was having with Hound Dog after his appointment with him, since Izuku's apartment walls were pretty thin, so it was purely a mistake that he was listening in. Along with that, he also tried to figure out why his classmate Hitoshi had multiple quirks. The best conclusion he could come up with was that, in his words, his second quirk is a byproduct of his first quirk and he was very sleep-deprived when he had finished his analysis. So crappy thing hash one ticked on the list of crappy things that happened to Izuku that day. Then there was school, Katsuki and Izuku had got there slightly later than they did the previous day, because Izuku ended up accidentally sleeping in that day, so there were slightly more people in the classroom before homeroom started. Hitoshi was in the classroom by the time they got there, so at least Izuku could interview him about his two quirks. But he ended up not being able to do it at that time because he was busy thoroughly apologizing to Katsuki because of the green beans oversleeping, though Katsuki accepted Izuku's apology every time because he knew it was an accident and that Izuku didn't mean to do it. But that didn't mean Izuku ended up interviewing Hitoshi in private. So crappy thing hash too, ticked on the list of crappy things that happened to Izuku that day, but the crap doesn't end there. After homeroom, which was actually relatively peaceful, was English with present Mike. Now don't get Izuku wrong, he adored present Mike like Aizawa adored sleeping, but Izuku didn't enjoy how loud he would get, even if it was part of his quirk. So built up anxiety from his first subject of the day meant crappy thing hash 3, ticked on the list of crappy things that happened to Izuku that day. Then after a crappy period of loud English was an even crappier period of math with ectoplasm, though the teacher wasn't the one causing all of the noise, just about everyone in that class was talking, though it was almost always on topic, so ectoplasm didn't mind. Izuku on the other hand, he'd rather be thrown into a volcano that's about to erupt than be in a noisy class like that. And what was worse was that Izuku couldn't focus because of the noise, so he didn't quite finish the work that was assigned to him, so he had to finish that alongside the homework that was assigned to him. And you know what that means. Crappy thing hash 4 ticked on the list of crappy things that happened to Izuku that day. Then there was third period hero training with All Might. Izuku didn't know what it was, but something seemed off about All Might that day. 
He was treating most of the students, including Izuku for that matter, like they didn't even know the most basic information. But apart from that, the class was learning about hand-to-hand -hand combat that lesson, and what to do if they were ever outnumbered in battle. And Izuku went how you'd expect a semi-overstimulated person would go. He did kind of good, though all of the touching bothered him quite a bit. And All Might didn't even take note on how uncomfortable Izuku looked. So crappy thing hash 5 ticked on the list of crappy things that happened to Izuku that day. Then it was lunchtime. Izuku sat with his new group of friends, which they had all decided to call their group the Achika Squad. Izuku tried to pay attention to the conversation that was going on, but the entire cafeteria was so loud. Izuku had a massive buildup of anxiety that day and knew that there would be more to come. The conversation then shifted to Izuku's lack of input in the conversation. When asked about it, Izuku partially lied keeping every autistic trait about himself a secret and replied with, I'm fine. Just a buildup of anxiety over high school. I'll be fine. But Katsuki suspected that there was more than meets the eye. Izuku tried to hide his fidgeting so he didn't stand out. Lunch wasn't crappy, but it couldn't have been any better than it already did. Then there was the last period of the day, and the final nail in the coffin for Izuku's overstimulation and anxiety. Hero Ethics was the final class Izuku had that day, and it was with the ever-so-quiet Erasure Hero, Eraserhead, Eika Aizawa, yay, though just because the teacher was quiet, that didn't mean the students in the class were. Achako, Mina, Toru, and Su were loudly working up at the front. Tenya was scolding Ajiro for what Izuku assumed was something to do about doing his work or something. Hitoshi was usually quiet by himself, but Denki was with him and the two were laughing loudly at what the electrification quirk user had said as a joke. Then Izuku started to chew on his fingers a habit that Izuku got rid of a long time ago that was starting to come back though not before long, Aizawa had noticed the state Izuku was in and instructed him to go out of the classroom, and before long both Aizawa and Izuku were both dealing with what was going to come. And Aizawa knew that Izuku was very overstimulated and he wanted to do everything he could to help Izuku through the situation. Before I do anything else, I have one thing to ask. Can I touch you? Aizawa asked, keeping his voice low and steady. Izuku nodded as the two sat down on the ground. Aizawa then took Izuku's hand and placed it on his chest. All right, I'd like you to copy my breathing, okay? Aizawa instructed. Minutes passed by in silence, except for the noise that was coming from the classroom, though it wasn't too much of a problem since the noise died down after Aizawa and Izuku went out of the room. The breathing exercise helped Izuku focus on something else that wasn't any ambient noises or the nasty day that he was having. Everything will be fine. Aizawa whispered multiple times as Izuku started to steady his fast breathing. Aizawa was going to try and do something that his former teachers did with him whenever he was really overstimulated. Although he wasn't sure whether or not Izuku wanted to do it, so he decided to ask him first. Hey, is it alright if we do another exercise, which my former teachers did whenever I was really overstimulated? Aizawa asked Izuku. Yes, sensei. Izuku replied, his voice shaky. Okay, I'm going to ask you some yes or no questions, you can answer them by talking, you can do that, but if you want to nod your head or shake at it, you can do that too, and if you know sign language, then you can do that as well, whatever feels comfortable for you. Also, there are no wrong answers. Aizawa instructed Izuku nodding. Okay. First question, do you enjoy eating fruit? Izuku nodded his head. Do you like apples? Once again, Izuku nodded. Do you enjoy eating vegetables? Izuku nodded. Do you like broccoli? Izuku nodded. Are you getting along with other people here? Izuku nodded. This was what he needed. Some peace and quiet. Sure, he was having a very crappy day, but Aizawa was making the heavy atmosphere around him a little bit lighter. After a few more questions, Aizawa asked one last question. Is there anything else I can do to help you? Aizawa asked. Izuku shook his head. Aizawa smiled, glad that he could help. He then stood and put his hands onto Izuku's shoulders. I know today has been difficult for you. Don't let this be a bad day. It will pass with time. You still have friends who love you. Izuku nodded. Now I don't expect you to do the rest of your work, this lesson, so feel free to stay out here for as long as you like. Izuku just nodded and smiled. Once the day ended, 
Katsuki had bring him home and stayed over for dinner, though he only stayed over to do Izuku's extra homework for him and helped Izuku with the actual homework. Izuku then fell asleep without incident. It was the day after the events of the previous chapter and Izuku was feeling much better. After having his regular subjects it was time for hero training, though things were a bit different, Aizawa and Cementos were there as well. Alright students, today we'll be getting a tight grasp on how you use your quirks and new ways to apply and enhance them, All Might explained, instead of one. In their hero costumes, they were all in their gym uniforms. We've managed to secure Jim Gamma for first years like you today, Aizawa said. Jim Gamma, also known as the Training Kitchen Lab or TKL for short, is a training facility for quirk development that I designed myself. Cementos informed the students as he placed his hands on the concrete floor. The terrain of the massive gymnasium quickly shifted as large platforms and cliffs formed from the ground. With my quirk, I can mold the area to help with any form of training our students need. That's right. One by one you'll go up demonstrate your quirk and eraserhead, Cementos, and I will give you feedback, All Might explained. Aoyama, you're the first student of 1A, so you'll be going up first. Aizawa instructed Aoyama going in. This would be a fantastic time to use my evaluate quirk on everyone, Izuku thought to himself, looking over at Katsuki. Meanwhile, in Jim Gamma, Yuga had showed off his quirk, Naval Laser, and had explained its limits, including how he couldn't use it for more than a second because of the pain that comes with it. Hearing this, Aizawa was the first to critique him. It seems like you'll have to try to go beyond your limits, Aoyama. Perhaps the best way to do that is firing out your laser constantly. Aizawa critiqued. Then Cementos was next to give Yuga some tips. I agree with what Eraserhead has said, as emitter-type quirks only get stronger when pushed beyond their limits. Cementos said. Then it was All Might's turn next. You will be much more powerful if you take that belt of yours off. The only way you'll become stronger is when you use your own strength, All Might told Yuga. But sir, if I don't wear it, then my sparkles will leak out constantly, Yuga informed, All Might shaking his head. Then you must learn to control it, young Aoyama, All Might exclaimed. Aizawa shook his head in disbelief. Not only was the number one hero ableist towards neurodivergent students, but also towards students who need to use support items to properly control their quirks. Aoyama, you may leave when ready. Aizawa instructed. Also, tell Ishido that she's up next. But not before you, All Might shouted out, before being cut off by Aizawa. Actually, you may leave now. Aizawa said Aoyama walking out. Nothing was happening during the meeting, the students were just making small talk with each other, and Izuku used his evaluate quirk on Katsuki, who was talking with Ijiro. After the two finished their conversation, Izuku walked up to Katsuki. Kaiken, Izuku called out. Hey, quirkologist, are you ready for your quirk assessment? Katsuki asked Izuku, grinning. Yeah, and if you don't mind, I used my evaluate quirk on you. I hope you don't mind, Izuku sheepishly replied and I and I'd like to share some of my findings Debbie with you. Sure, go ahead. Katsuki nodded. All right, I'll tell you the basics of your quirk, right down to the complexities, Izuku smiled, doing a motion that was similar to rocking. Katsuki then smiled again, knowing how happy it made Izuku whenever he used his evaluate quirk on others, even himself sometimes, and he also knew most of Izuku's stimming habits, including his rocking. So what I know is that your quirk allows you to create explosions out of your hands, and this is because of the sweat glands on your palms, but are different than your other sweat glands which are built normally. The sweat glands on your palms sweat out nitroglycerin-like sweat and are much more sweatier than the normal kind of sweat gland. Though the fuel for your quirk is your sweat, in situations where it's colder, your sweat takes longer to detonate, as opposed to warmer weather where the conditions are optimal for your quirk to ignite. Izuku and Fadamt. So as a suggestion, perhaps training your palms to sweat more could help you with this weakness. If not, you could wear warmer clothes so you can sweat more, though it does seem that overusing your explosive explosions will result in your arms and shoulders giving out, so with most emitter-type quirks, constant usage will eventually make your quirk stronger. Katsuki nodded. I see. Thanks for the advice, quirkologist. Izuku smiled, especially since Katsuki was one of the few people he knew he could comfortably infod him to and would listen to him. Just then, Ijiro walked up, listening to Izuku and Katsuki's conversation. 
So, Midoriya, you can analyze other people's quirks, I hear, Ijiro asked Izuku, who nodded. Well then, can you analyze my quirk? Of course, Kirishima, Izuku answered. Can you tell me more about your quirk? Of course, my quirk, hardening, allows me to harden my skin. It's not very flashy, though. Ijiro explained. Your quirk is amazing, Kirishima. You shouldn't doubt it. Izuku complimented Ijiro. Transformation types are interesting. They advance and develop as a sort of in-between of emitter types and mutant types. Your hardening seems to take on a rocky kind of structure. Yeah, that's true, Ijiro proceeded to look at the ground with doubt. Most transformation types start out fairly small scale. Izuku shrugged with a smile. But I can already tell you're nowhere near your full capabilities. You can push so much farther. In fact, let's try something. Like what? Ijiro questioned. Yeah, I think you're much closer to advancing your quirk than you think. Izuku grinned at the red head. You're holding yourself back by doubting your power, Kirishima. Activate your quirk. Okay, Ijiro blinked as he hardened his right arm, it taking on a sharp, rocky texture. What now? Do it again. Izuku demanded, smiling as confidently as the sun when it rose in the morning. What? Ijiro implored, perplexed with Izuku's orders. Force your quirk to activate again. Izuku encouraged the hardening quirk user in an encouraging way. But my quirk is already active. Ijiro was unsure about Izuku's orders. Is it now? Izuku questioned Ajiro, who just stood there, bewildered. Are you really using all of it? I think so. Ajiro looked rather unsure, not knowing what forcing his quirk to activate while active. Then prove it and force it again, Izuku exclaimed, overexcited with the outcome of his demand. If you say so, Midoriya. Ajiro just shrugged, unable to argue with Izuku. As Ajiro tried to activate his quirk while maintaining it, he felt a strong resistance when he did like his arm was fully flexed and he was trying to move it. He couldn't move it past the resistance. This was his limit. More, stronger, denser, more, Izuku screamed out, encouraging Ijiro some more. The green bean was so caught up in trying to help his classmate. He was so caught up that he didn't notice the rest of the class except for Mina and Sue watching them. Ijiro then hardened his entire body, forcing his quirk past the resistance that was pushing him. He felt like something cracked, and then the resistance was gone. He felt heavy but strangely stronger. Congratulations, Kirishima, Izuku smiled brightly. Your hardening quirk just evolved beyond its limits, plus ultra style. This is very hard to maintain, Ijiro mentioned, and just like that his quirk deactivated. You just developed it and made it stronger, Izuku grinned happily. It'll take a while until you can use it just as easily as you use the current level. You just need more training. Thanks, Midoriya. I can't believe I was able to go so much further. Ijiro smiled. You just needed to stop doubting yourself and your quirk, Kirishima. Izuku waved off the thanks. Sometimes we're our own worst enemy. Ijiro looked at Izuku's face when he heard that. He saw the same look in the one with all users' eyes that he'd seen in his own in the mirror, back when he almost lost his drive to be a hero. I feel that, bro. Ijiro nodded. Yeah. Izuku gave a lopsided smile. But we have to move beyond the past if we want to be heroes, right? Izuku then held out his fist. Heck yeah, Ijiro fist bumped Izuku. A few moments later, Tsu walked up to Izuku. I've heard that you can analyze other people's quirks. Do you think you can analyze mine? Tsu asked the green bean, who was connected to the radio waves, using his radio signal quirk. Of course, Asu, I mean of course, Tsu, Izuku nodded. After a few moments passed, Izuku told Sue his findings. How amazing, Sue, your quirk frog is extremely versatile. May I ask you a few questions about it? Of course, Kiro. What exact frog are you? This question confused Sue quite a bit. Midoriya, I don't think you get it. My quirk is called frog. I can do anything a frog can do, Kiro. Sue simply replied, I'm aware, but which frog in particular? Izuku asked. That's I'm Tsu just responded with confusion. I guess I've never thought about it before. Well, there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of frog species out there in the world. Izuku pointed out. What are your froggy capabilities as of now? Frog-like anatomy, great leg strength, wall clinging, a powerful extending tongue, fast swimming, and secreting mucus with different effects like paralysis and hiding scent. Tsu explained. 
Have you ever tried training to be like other frogs? Izuku wondered. What do you mean, Midoriya kun? Sue asked. Your quirk isn't limited to just one type of frog. If you train your body to use the abilities of other frog species, you could possibly be any frog ever in the entire world, Izuku exclaimed, Sue amazed with Izuku's findings. I'll try that, thanks, Midoriya. Sue thanked her friend. After a few more minutes, Katsuki walked up to Izuku, grinning to himself. So I hear that you've analyzed someone else, eh? Katsuki inquired. Yeah, Sue came over, so I analyzed her quirk. Izuku explained. Nice. Katsuki grinned. Who are you going to analyze next? I'm not entirely sure yet. Izuku truthfully replied. In his mind, Katsuki was grinning even more, but tried not to show it too much on his face. Well, anyways, I'm going to go talk with Kirishima. If you need me, I'll be there with him. Katsuki told Izuku, walking off. Izuku then reactivated radio signal and continued to vibe. Meanwhile, in Jim Gamma, All Might continued to indirectly harass everyone with his ableism becoming more clear with each word that came out of his mouth, and he didn't even realize the harm he was doing. But back with Izuku. After listening to a news broadcast about it, the news broadcast about a robbery that had happened the previous night, Mina had walked up to him. Yo, Midoriya, Sue told me that you can analyze other people's quirks. Do you think you can analyze mine? Mina happily asked the green bean. Oh, sure, Ashido. Izuku accepted Mina's request, though hesitant, because the news story was getting interesting. Can you give me a basic description of your quirk, so I can understand it better? Sure, my quirk is called acid. It allows me to produce a corrosive liquid from my body. Mina explained. Izuku thought for a bit. Are you able to control the viscosity of it? What about the solubility? Or the corrosivity? Are you able to produce different types of acids? Izuku bombarded Mina with questions. Uh, I don't know, Mina replied, a little bit of anxiety showing in her face. Then perhaps you should study up on some chemistry. If you can freely control which acids you produce, you could become irreplaceable in dozens of situations. As for direct applications, I'd recommend focusing your control on both solubility and viscosity. The more control you have over your acid, the less likely you are to harm someone by accident. Izuku gave some advice to Mina, hoping to help her out. Yeah, controlling the properties of my acid would definitely help me a lot. I hurt myself a few times growing up by creating stuff that was too strong for me to handle. Mina admitted with a sheepish grin. Well, I hope my advice can help you become better at using your quirk. Izuku hoped. Anyways, thank you, Midoriya. Mina thanked, walking off. Izuku nodding, soon continuing to listen to the radio signals. The news broadcast was still talking about the robbery, so Izuku listened in on it some more, this time taking notes on it with his notebook, which he had bring to class in case he'd figure out why Hitoshi had two quirks. Izuku had noted most of the important details of it, including the fact that Rabbit Hero, Mirko managed to deal with this event. After that, Izuku then took notes about his classmate's quirks, and was deep in thought until. Hey, Midoriya, Denki screamed out, startling the broccoli boy. What do you want, Izuku huffed, not realizing that it was Denki. Don't you know it's extremely mean to sneak up on someone with PTS? Izuku then looked up, realizing that it was Denki who startled him. D. Izuku then started blushing a bright red. His cheeks were so red that they could bring any fully grown tomato to shame. Denki soon started blushing as well, having an apologetic expression on his face. I'm sorry, Midoriya. I just heard from a certain explosive blonde that you can analyze other people's quirks. Denki apologized as Izuku was embarrassed that he accidentally revealed one of his deepest, darkest secrets to someone he had hardly knew at the time. I apologize if I scared you or triggered anything unpleasant. Oh, please don't tell anyone else about that, Izuku demanded, still a blushing mess as Denki then nodded in agreement. So anyways about your quirk analysis, tell me more about your quirk, so I can get a better understanding of it. Oh yeah, my quirk is called electrification. It allows me to produce large voltages of electricity, and I can let that stored electricity release into my surroundings, though currently have no way to direct said electricity as of now. Denki explained, and if I use too much electricity, I turn into a complete dum-dum. I see your quirk is of a very rare typing. It would be a shame if it went to waste, Izuku muttered, slightly dissociating. Nidoriya, you okay? You seem to be blanking out, Denki, asked the victim of trauma. Soon, 
Izuku then snapped right back into reality. Oh yeah, I'll be fine, hopefully. Izuku reassured Denki. So your quirk. Have you ever thought about using support items to help you direct your electricity to specific targets? I have sort of thought of that. I've never really had a specific thought about it. Denki admitted. And about the part with you becoming a total idiot, have you ever tried to control your electricity instead of focusing on how much of it you produce? Izuku soon asked the electrical team. Now that I think about it, I haven't. Thanks, Midoriya. This'll make quirk usage much easier, Denki thanked the broccoli boy. And don't worry, I won't tell anyone about your you-know-what. Izuku smiled at this, since he wasn't intending on any of his classmates learning about Izuku's trauma, so it was good to know that the leak was plugged before it broke. Denki then walked off, leaving Midoriya back with his notebook. Once he had finished his notes on everyone, he tried to figure out more theories to why Hitoshi had two quirks. Several theories included. He was born with a condition that left him with two quirks. He had a quirk awakening, giving him his extra quirk. Somehow someone transferred his second quirk into him. Or he's the result of a perfect quirk combination. Then Izuku blanked out again, simply staring at his notebook. He couldn't stop thinking about everything. After a few minutes, Izuku heard a voice. Hey, quirkologist, Katsuki screamed, snapping Izuku back into reality. Kek and Izuku blurted out. Were you dissociating again, Katsuki asked Izuku. Maybe Izuku lowered his head in shame. Wherever you were in your mind, you're not there anymore. You're here with me in ground beta. Katsuki comforted. Yeah, I know. Izuku nodded. Did you need me for something, Keken? Human Minecraft heard about your analyzing skills, and she wanted you to analyze her quirk, but you were dissociating, so she came to me. Katsuki explained. I'll bring her over. Izuku smiled, happy to analyze another person's quirk. Soon enough, Momo had walked up to Izuku. So, what can you tell me about my quirk? Momo asked, smiling. Before that, what can you tell me about your quirk? The green bean inquired. My quirk is called creation. It allows me to create stuff as long as I know it's atomic structure and if I have enough body fat. Momo explained. I see, Izuku nodded. I must ask you something. What kind of style were you going for with your hero costume? I also need space on my body for me to be able to create the stuff I want to create. Momo explained. I see, did you think of the possible sex appeal that would come with your costume? Izuku asked, taking notes. No, not really, I just told the costume manufacturing company that I need skin exposure. I didn't even think of the possible appeal that could come with. Momo answered. If you'd like, I'd gladly make you some adjustments to your costume. I'm really good at sketching. Izuku offered, smiling. It's something my mother's friend taught me. Sure, Midoriya. How long do you think you'll be with it? Momo inquired. I'll need a picture of your hero costume for reference, so once you get me that, I'll be able to start. Izuku replied. And I have a question about your quirk. When you've finished using the item you've created, what happens to it? Usually, I just wait until it gets destroyed. Momo raised an eyebrow. And what if the item you create is basically indestructible, Izuku asked. Well, I guess it just exists. Momo shrugged. Have you ever tried absorbing what you create back into your body, Izuku asked. No, I haven't. I'll definitely have to try that next time I use my quirk. Thanks, Midoriya. Momo thanked Izuku, walking off. No problem, the green-haired wonder ball exclaimed. After Izuku's meeting with Momo, Izuku went back to his notes, thinking about which of his theories about Hitoshi's quirks was most likely to be correct. He knew that his third theory was very wild, though it wasn't totally out of the window either, since it had definitely explained why his second quirk caused harm to him, though it brings up a whole lot of other questions, such as, who gave him his second quirk? Why was he chosen? Does his second quirk run through his family? Or, why would he lie about only having one quirk? Then the next wildest theory was his second theory, since quirk awakenings aren't always uncommon for people with villain quirks. Izuku would definitely know. One with all is definitely seen as being villainous, though mind control doesn't really have anything to do with power buildup, and Izuku didn't really want to be too nosy in case if Hitoshi did have a quirk awakening, it wasn't any of the quirkologist's business how it happened. Then there was Izuku's fourth theory. 
Izuku wasn't sure what to think of a perfect combination, though it wasn't out of the window since there could be a chance that brainwashing and one for all could just be two quirks mushed together. But then Izuku realized how dumb his point could have been. But then there was Izuku's first theory. It seemed like it was pretty much possible since Izuku knew that there were people out there who could hold multiple quirks within them, so he kept that one mostly in mind. A few minutes later, Ochako had walked up to Izuku. So I hear that you can analyze quirks. Ochako guessed. Yeah, would you like me to analyze your quirk? Izuku inquired, seeing where this interaction was going. Yeah, I'd like that, Midoriya, Ochako nodded. My quirk is called Zero Gravity. It allows me to remove the effects of gravity on my targets through touch, though overuse can cause nausea. On that note, you might want to think about having your costume altered a bit to put a bit of pressure on your wrists and neck. There are pressure points there that help with nausea. The biggest cause of your nausea probably has to do with the semicircular canals in your ears. They help regulate balance, and when they're disturbed by a sudden loss of gravity, as an example, they'll give you a case of vertigo. You might be able to train that weakness away, but some support gear could also help. Medicines such as motion sickness pills could also work, I think. I believe you should also look into a sort of grappling hook that you could use to help with mobility. Izuku told the Machai girl, Thanks for the advice, Midoriya. The Machai girl thanked as Tenya soon ran up to Izuku. Before Tenya said anything, Izuku knew exactly what he wanted from him. Let me guess, quirk analysis, Izuku presumed. How did you know? Tenya asked Izuku, raising an eyebrow. Lucky guess, I guess. Izuku chuckled. Anyways, tell me more about your quirk. My quirk is called engine. As it's a mutant type, I have car-like engines in each of my calves, giving me incredible running speed and extreme kicking power. Tenya explained. Do you need to fuel them up? Izuku asked. Yes, I need to fuel them by drinking orange juice. Tenya replied. I see. Izuku nodded. Your engines let you rapidly accelerate and maintain high velocity. Your legs seem to have undergone natural strengthening because of this. Though I believe you've also conditioned them further yourself. Indeed. Tenya nodded with a grin. I plan to use my legs as my main form of offense in the field. Therefore, it was paramount that I strengthen them as much as possible. To further your quirk usage, I'd suggest consistently upping the time you can spend in top gear. The longer you can maintain max speed and output, the further you'll push your quirk. Mutant type quirks only advance when physically forced past their limits. You may also want to incorporate the most efficient cooling system you can fit into your costume. I believe overheating will stall you out, and that could leave you as a liability on the field. Izuku explained. Indeed, when I hit maximum output, I can usually only maintain it for a short 10-second burst, Tenya informed the one with all user. As I further develop my quirk, I hope to be able to not only increase speed, but how long I can maintain it as well. That sounds like a great idea. What are you currently working towards achieving, Izuku questioned, curious. My goal for now is to reach full potential and be able to move independently. Once I achieve that I will focus on the strength requirement. Tenya explained. That makes sense, Izuku nodded. You'll probably also need to figure out a way to get rid of excess weight. A lot of people lose unnecessary pounds when exercising, so maybe a little exercise can help with that. That'd help you reduce the calories needed to keep your engines running. It sounds wise to take action with these recommendations. Thank you very much for them. Tenya thanked, bowing respectfully. This caused Izuku to blush. Ha ti ti, there's nn no need to bow, Ida. I'm just helping out a fff friend. Izuku stuttered. Of course is of course, Tenya laughed. Izuku blushed even more as Tenya just walked off, chuckling to himself. Izuku had gone back to his notes, taking notes about his friend's quirks and other ways if they could enhance them. As Izuku was about to go up and ask Rikido about his quirk, speak of the devil, plus ultra. Me and Koji were wondering if you could analyze my quirk. Rikido told Izuku, Koji walking right beside him. Of course, Sato, Izuku nodded. Can you tell me more about your quirk? My quirk is called Sugar Rush. It's a transformation quirk that allows me to get stronger for every 10 grams of sugar I consume. Though too much sugar leaves me extremely fatigued and kind of an idiot. Interesting, what kind of sugar do you normally use to activate your quirk? Izuku asked Rikido. 
Normally, I just use granulated sugar to activate my quirk, just the stuff you can buy off the shelf anywhere. Rikido shrugged. Have you ever tried other forms of sugar for activating your quirk, like brown sugar or cane sugar, confectioner's sugar, muscovado sugar, turbinado sugar, pearl sugar, sanding sugar, all of them are either from different sources or have different levels of refinement and processing, and fruits even have some sugars in them. I believe that these differences would most likely impact your quirk in different ways. Plus, the kickback of your quirk could probably be better controlled with training and testing of your limits. Your quirk may have the effect of increasing your strength from regular sugar, but I believe it may have far more applications based on the type of sugar you consume. While basic granulated sugar increases your strength, it may very well be that a different type of sugar increases your speed or could perhaps increase your durability. Also, a few capsules of stevia may help in the short term for regulating your drawback as it helps lower blood sugar levels. Izuku smiled at the man of sugar. As for the long term, I suggest that natural exercise could increase your base strength by a lot. That's impressive, Midoriya. I actually use brown sugar and confectioner's sugar when I bake and cook. Why I never thought to pop a few grams of them and try to activate my quirk, I'll never know. But I do know what I'm going to be trying soon. Thanks for the analysis, bro, Rikido. No problem, Sato. Izuku smiled as he fist-bumped the sugar rush user. Koda, would you like me to analyze your quirk as well? Koji shook his head, which Izuku accepted. I see. Izuku simply nodded, knowing a thing or two about consent. Soon, Rikido and Koji walked off, leaving Izuku once more to his thoughts and notebook. As moments passed, Izuku started thinking about how he'd do when it was his turn in Jim Gamma. So to make himself more at ease, he decided to take notes on his own quirks. He decided to rank them from weakest to most powerful. Ink Blast. Gunpoint. Evaluate. Radio Signal. Attraction of Small Objects. Handcuff. Vine Whips. Weight Loss. Chameleon. Web Shoot. Jelly Surprise. Tentacles. Ignite. Ice Blade. Rock plates. Hot wings. Hold up. Sparks fly. Regeneration. Brain curdle. Gummy body. Heart bomb. Objectify. Rhyming reason. After a while, it was finally Izuku's turn, though he overheard something being said to Shoto. Do you want to be expelled? Aizawa questioned Shoto. If you won't give it your all you don't belong in the hero course, use your fire and show us what you can do. That or you can leave. I won't use his quirk, Shoto groaned out, his fists clenched at his sides, returning to the others. Soon enough, Izuku had walked into Jim Gamma, Eraserhead, Cementos, and All Might were waiting for him. Midoriya, Aizawa greeted. It's nice to be here. Izuku smiled, trying not to look awkward in front of All Might. As you could see, you're the last one to be here, since you have an arsenal of quirks that can be applied in different ways. Aizawa explained. Understood? Understood, Izuku repeated. Now you have a choice, the order of which your quirks are demonstrated can be in any order you want, whether in the order you got them, alphabetical, weakest to strongest, strongest to weakest. Whatever, Aizawa explained. Though firstly, tell us about your original quirk. Izuku smiled genuinely, exited about the fact that he could talk about his own quirk for once. Of course, my quirk is called one with all. It's an emitter type. It allows me to steal the power of other people's quirks, and it gives me a more powerful version of the original quirk based upon my own and the target's ages. For example, when my own quirk awakened, I accidentally stole Katsuki's quirk and turned it into six times more powerful than it originally was. I was lucky he isn't a mutant quirk user, since I could have been entirely mistaken. Izuku infodumped. Each of the teachers nodded. Is there anything else? Cementos asked Izuku, making him jump up and down. Absolutely. The way the power level determine, with X meaning my age, and Y meaning the target's age, for emitters. XY equals power level. For transformers, Xi half of X equals power level. For mutants, Y1 equals power level. Izuku continued to infodump. And I can also use my stockpiled quirks in combinations, however, I can only use up to five quirks in a combination at a time. If I use too many emitter quirks, I end up bleeding. If I use too many transformation quirks, I break my bones. If I use too many mutant quirks, I go crazy. 
Then Izuku started demonstrating his quirks, showing off the different ways he uses them. When the school day ended, Izuku smiled to himself, happy that he was able to help his friends with their quirks and applying them in different ways, as well as suggestions for support items that they could use, and the fact that he knew he could make his quirks his own instead of being used by villains. Maybe life isn't so bad after all. Izuku thought to himself.